Ready? Three, two, we're on this. And we're live. Hello, Brian Campbell. How are you? I'm fired up. I'm fired up. You want to know why? Why are you fired up? Because it's pre PBC on Prime Video, the inaugural pay-per-view here in Las Vegas, and we, Morning Combat, are here live, local, and late-breaking in the uh, radio row here of the media room. So MGM Grand. Of course, the fight is Saturday night, T-Mobile Arena. Yeah. Prime Video, 8 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it. Don't, don't mess with that one just yet. i got to show them the cut. But we have another. You're asking, is there another camera angle? Yes, there's another camera angle. And so the press conference is right behind us, and then the guest is here. You can leave that up for now. How is else is Othello is here in Las Vegas. How, sounds good? The focus is off? All right, you want to met you just you can go ahead and mess with it. It doesn't matter. It's the front but it's the front focus, not the back one. Do you think Othello is better on camera or behind it? I mean, have you seen him? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So Luke, huh. um, this is not just us enjoying and experiencing boxing in a great pay-per-view card on Saturday. Headlined, of course, by Tim Zhu, Sebastian Fundora, unification at 154, maybe Terrence Crawford next. Lots to talk about there. This is also morning combat, getting it back together in the midst of the transition that begins Monday. Yeah, this Monday, April 1st. No fooling, no joking, motherfucker. What kind of pornography you been watching? We will be in New York City, Luke. So <laughs> shout out, of course, to Metal Alert Media. Shout out to DraftKings. I just want to point out shout that out. I just want to point out that. Um, well, hold on. They say we can turn the volume up. I mean, the volume's fucking up, man. I don't listen to those people. Luke. Uh, the volume is right. fucking up. I don't know what you want me to do. Um, what was I gonna say? How, how's the uh, volume sound, Othello? BC's a little low. Maybe I need to speak more directly into this. His thing. is on that one. If you want to up him on that one, yeah, up uh, that. we'll just do this in real hold time. On. We'll do it live. Yeah, it's not this one. It's the it's not this one. It's the other one. Yeah, that one. Don't put your hand over the fucking lens, Othello. <laughs> hey, if I walk in front of a camera, Spall the it, off the boat. Does it block the view? All right, All right. why don't you talk again? So, Luke, we are in the... You're uh, a little low. You're a little low. It's all right. I want to take. I want to shout out to uh, MGM Resorts International for hosting us this week. Shout out to Premier Boxing Champions. Um, shout out to me, Luke. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Shout out to you. Yeah. Shout out to you. You had a lot of technical difficulties today, but you didn't get surly. You didn't tell me off. I wanted to. And you fixed the process. I wanted to tell you to S a D. <laughs> hey, can you fix this, please? It's fading. Just turn the camera a little bit, please. So we've had a number of uh, very good guests that'll be siphoning in and out on, yeah, on uh, the there Luke you go, Thomas fellow. YouTube channel where you're watching this. I just right want now. to point out that this channel has saved your ass so many times. Um, All of the bullshit I had to listen to about how it was interference for MK. Right. When in the end, no, I mean if you want to get end, into that, if you'd love to get into that, we could. When, when I'm it, sure the audience would, would side with me. I'm sure they would. But right, that's there is no possible way that people who don't know anything about YouTube are going to lecture me about YouTube. It was more like, hey, when we used to do the show once a week, which we're going to start doing yes, now. That's right. Yes. Why would people watch MK on Monday? If did you're you notice put out that the, the numbers? Same video on, on did Sunday you ever night? notice you know that the numbers on MK were never affected when I did? Did you ever notice that? I, I was. Well, just I wonder more, what I wonder what that Luke, means. I'm just more into repping the brand that I'm with. You know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm repping the brand that I'm with as well. I'm repping the brand that I'm with as well. You got to keep turning so it. So I don't know you why you're right. bringing up old old insults. Well, I mean, just the just the mix, just the you know? total bullshit slander I had to endure for what in the end ended up being like a very helpful vehicle for us and for me, by the way, to pay my mortgage going forward. I just feel like. You were wrong then. You're wrong now. And not well, only, I mean, you know, not you, only were you wrong then and wrong now. You're actually now dependent on me now. I'm not dependent on you at all. In a just way so that you know. is like blowing just my so mind. You know. I'm not dependent at all. You can, if you turn this feed off, I'll be, I'll be fine. I'll be fine the rest of the day, week. Don't tempt me with a good okay. time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. And if you want to get into the deeper moral and ethical decisions about why at times I was against your channel in comparison yes, to the work that was you expected of you at CBS yes. Sports, I don't want to go down that road. Yeah, though, you're okay? not going to be right about anything, and uh, you were wrong the entire time. But neither here nor there, that is water under the bridge. We're here at the uh, Zoo versus Fundora press conference. It's going on behind us. BC, you got to say, not that interesting. Uh, you know, I mean, it might not be the spiciest, might not be the sexiest press conference we've ever seen, but, but Luke, deep card, and let's start off right here, okay? Okay. Has Roley talked about... 
his his genitals. Yeah. No, but I hope we get Rolly Romero live. So what I was saying before was we already filmed a bunch of very good interviews. You'll see them on Luke Thomas's very valuable uh, YouTube channel, and I appreciate that. Today, hey. you're also going to get live interviews on this on this two hour live stream that we're. We're going to try to go two hours. We're going to see how it goes. We're going to try to go two hours. So the way it's going to work, BC, you know this was uh, we've set this all up, but. This presser is going to end, and when it does, they're going to start just rifling guests sure. through, sure. which you'll see on this angle of the shot when they come sit down. I have to say, Luke, as much as I wrangle you at times and, and counterpunch to your deeply ineffective insults, I will say I'm impressed by the amount of gear you have, by your ability to stitch it all together, and by your self-fulfilling personal prophecies of you don't need another company because you have it all you do you don't think that's quite right i don't think that's quite right i don't i I do have an impressive amount of gear most of which failed me today Uh, (laughs) and i could always use some production help but it does i will say this it does to the extent you can be self-sufficient it helps to have some self-sufficiency so i wore this uh lumberjack uh uh shirt because it would match this mic i like the red Circus clown. Yeah, I did not order those on purpose. Let me tell you. Look uh, on my nose. Look at that. So, Luke, what I was trying to say is, we're obviously here for uh, PBC on Prime Video, the inaugural pay per view. We were there for the end of the road at Showtime after 37 years. So, you know, if you're a boxing head, it's a big deal this transfer. But this is the rare pay per view fight card, rare elite main event that actually got upgraded by the last minute injury and change. No disrespect to Keith Thurman, but I don't that be- fight- I, I'm not a I'm not a believer that there was an upgrade. I don't I, I like this fight just fine. Okay. Upgrade's a strong word. I think upgrade in the potential action, upgrade in the potential competitiveness, maybe. I mean, look, I think Keith Thurman was going to overperform everybody's expectations because their expectations were like, well, he's 35, he's never fought at 154, he hasn't fought often. My whole point is to have his injury and sub in sub-in Sebastian Fundora. That upgraded this fight to a unification from a non-title fight because Thurman couldn't get sanctioned to a unification. And look, maybe the most important thing that's happened since that is that Terrence Ward Crawford might want the winner. Doesn't let me just ask this nicely as I, if I as I can. Doesn't Terrence wash both of them? I don't know that. As, as Terrence is obviously amazing, and he's coming off maybe the best one we've ever seen in combat sports. Right? What, I, and be, and, person, and like it would maybe, be Terrence at 154, right? I think Terrence will be great at 154. I think he should be favored against both of them. Obviously, Tim Zhu would be the bigger reason to do that fight for the potential of the star crossover. And Tim headlining his first pay-per-view in the States, fighting in Las Vegas for the first time. This is a big fight. But if, you can, if you're the PBC and you can end Saturday night with Terrence Crawford like in the ring or trash talk between them and the idea that it could be next... I mean, this, these weird peck shaking doesn't doesn't dis, disrail my analysis here. Luke, it doesn't I, disrail. I don't like that knee-jerk decision of, well, wouldn't both lose to Bud? I don't know. Bud's also 36. He's going to have a long layoff. By the time he gets back into the ring, he'll be moving up in weight. Yes. If Tim Zhu blows through Fundora, like the odds makers tell you, he might, but we got to see it. That's a, that's a massive fight that you're building towards. But that's the future. For right now, the big question we have this week is we know Fundor is a live dog. He was already going to be on this card against Sergei Bochuk for a vacant title. Now Fundor's moved up, and now that title came with him. So there's two titles at stake. How live of a dog is he? That's the real question. Six foot, six and a half. Southpaw, the towering inferno. He'll have a nine-inch height and reach advantage against Tim Zhu. Nine inches. Two weeks to prepare. How live? Is Sebi Fundora? I don't think he's that. Li- well, I think he'll be an interesting challenge early. I really do. I think he'll be an interesting challenge early, and then I honestly believe the more he gets backed up, which he's going to, the more that it's just going to go. Like once it starts going downhill, it will go downhill quickly. But I do believe early on it will be awkward and weird. Tim Zhu's probably not going to run into. And I mean, he obviously got dropped again against Terrell Gaucher in his. American debut? True. But would you say that that was an out-of-character discipline from him? For sure. And this is what I mean. Like, that kind of thing is going to discipline him here. So I don't think he's... Obviously, against a very tall guy, you're going to be, you know, careful about range, especially early. But once he gets inside, I think he's just going to start just demolishing the body. And that's going to be that. Um, Okay. I think what people are discounting potentially here is that Fundora has an ability to go downhill on you just the same. Punches and bunches, back you up. Yes, he gives away his height and reach advantage a lot. He does. But he also throws punches and flurries. The key for Fundora is what adjustments can he make from the only loss of his career, his last fight, 
when he was up, up on the scorecards against Brian Mendoza, got knocked out in upset fashion. We talked to him. They can watch that interview on Luke Thomas. I just put it up, yeah. On the Luke Thomas YouTube channel. Did you like his answers to the idea of what did you change from that defeat? And essentially the real question hidden in that is did you add enough defensive responsibility to win this fight against I Tim definitely Sue? did not like his answer. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, the answer is not convincing. Um, I mean, I bet he watched the tape. I bet he realized, you know, mind your posture, mind your balance, mind your yeah. range. But I think against a pressure fighter, like a, a jackhammer in the way that Zoo is, it's going to be tough. All right. So the fighters are going to face off, and then they're going to bring us about, hey, there's Andre Ward. Andre Ward's Andre in the Andre Ward's house. over there, yeah. Uh, Ray Flores, you just heard the voice of. The voice of one championship. One championship's Ray Flores. We want to get him yes. in studio, or in studio, here in fighting so in front of us. So this will be a fun, free-flowing thing. It won't be all boxing. We'll be having a good time. We'll be cracking jokes. We talked to Biagio Ali Walsh this morning. You did. Of the PFL. You did. So, grandson of the greatest. Grandson of the greatest. Trains with Nixick over there at Extreme Cooter. <laughs> Nixick's seen a few of those, you know what I mean? To the extreme, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> See, we got jokes, too. Yeah. Look, people are so happy to have us back together, except for you and I. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just I'm miserable. I'm just kidding. I'm um, <laughs> can you remind the people what's going on tonight when we show up in the same hotel room? Sex? I mean, I don't know. Like, what kind of a question is I that? Lo I love, by the way, the dogs that were like, finally, they're banging. Finally, yes. <laughs> All right, so here's the plan. You can hear people clapping in the distance for what was a very mid-presser. Hey, Miguel Cotto's here. Okay, that fires me up. <laughs> Miguel Cotto's here? Yes. Where is he? He's lingering. That's awesome. I'd love to talk to him. Uh, yeah. Um, and then they're going to bring people by, and we're going to just fart on the air. Yeah, hey, Tui, we're going to do a few different things right here. Luke, do you want to give a general message of the people in the love was was thick this week? We obviously, Monday, yeah. we went to the studio, Metal Arc. We announced our next phase, MK2.0, if you will, right? Joining forces with Metal Arc Media, DraftKings, all the Smoke Productions. We debut Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern, live show. They can catch it right now, Monday. There was some confusion about Let's that. Let's break it down. Okay, so, so it will be on the, no matter what. No matter what. It'll be in your audio feed, no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. It'll be on the DraftKings Network, True. 5 p.m. Eastern yes. time on Monday. True. You can download it on your smart TV, get it on your phone, laptop, all that. It will eventually be on the Morning Combat YouTube channel. Yes. How can you navigate why or, or what the deal is? With okay, you? so first of all, there is a chance it will be on the MK YouTube channel on Monday. That's not out of the realm of possibility. If you're asking, hey, what took so long? We are trying to get the YouTube functionality and the control of that from Paramount over to the new arrangement. Right. And to explain that, which we didn't explain the other day, we will eventually own. We're going to have all of it. We're going to own. We, we're, we're gonna the socials, own, the YouTube, the name, everything. We're going to own the IP. And so what we've been waiting on this whole time was press release was ready to go, DraftKings ready to go, Metal Arc ready to go, but getting that. IP processed out of CBS, it doesn't happen overnight. I wish it did. It just doesn't. And we weren't necessarily brief that it could take this we long. Didn't, we didn't. If I had realized it was going to take this long, we might have had a different plan. But the point I'm trying to make is 100%, no matter where you live, it'll be available on audio. For folks who get DraftKings Network, it'll be there. And then, if not Monday, very soon thereafter, and for everything else we do, it will be back on YouTube. So YouTube is just a temporary, very temporary hiatus as we deal with all of the changes that we're undergoing right so, now thank you for the love and the well wishes especially all the people who were at luke's cry and i'm still responding to literally hundreds of dms of just people saying you know i never reach out before but i'm a i'm a taxi driver in dublin and you know you guys are my are my go-to i appreciate that we will still be your go-to we will go to your ear holes if we need to we'll go to your fucking house and bang your moms <laughs> okay that was you know, I'm that, looking forward to banging their moms. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's. Are we? Wait, do it, people have a lot of? Can I ask you the questions that people have about us? Sure. Okay. Let's number one, will aligning with DraftKings siphon our voice when necessary to be critical against certain promoters in this game? What is that? Who would be? So the way, the way the deal works for us is, we we would not take a deal if there were any demands or requirements to favor one promoter over the other. That's a non-starter for me. Part of the benefit of the DraftKings deal is that we get to say and we'll do whatever the fuck we want. Like, no one can say anything about that. DraftKings can't say anything about it. Metal Art can't say anything about it. Nobody can say anything about it. 
that's not on. I, I realize that 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 there are some financial relationships that DraftKings has with one promoter or the other, but that's got nothing to do with us. Like, we are being empowered to deliver content for you guys. DraftKings wants to be a part of it, but they didn't put any restrictions or ask for favorability. Yes. yes. Ever, okay. ever. Question number two: You, we got fired by CBS. We did not and get we fired. We only by CBS. took the time off in February to shop and eventually sell the deal. No, we never got fired from CBS. I am still employed by CBS. Brian just signed a new deal to stay employed with CBS. My deal runs through the end. I'll say it. My deal runs through the end of the summer. Um, I, my, it will, my relationship will certainly change with them. But even then, we've already talked about staying with them, what I'll do for them. So, no. I. By the way, like if I got hit by a car today and I had to go to the hospital, you know who's paying for my insurance? Paramount Global, baby. Sure. Shout out That's to them. That's who pays for my insurance. So for, for people that, that felt like they didn't get the full story, we obviously knew this could happen as long as a year ago. Yes, right? that is true. And we always had a great relationship with CBS. We always knew that if the changes that ended up happening for Paramount happened, Remember, they went all in on combat when Viacom merged with CBS a few years ago. Mm-hmm. That's what opened the, uh, the door for you getting hired. But when that changed, Showtime Boxing went away, Bellator was sold, that changes the game to a certain degree. So we are, uh, we could have stayed at CBS. We would have been a Zoom only show most likely, but we could have stayed at CBS. We wanted to, to, to go back to being what we are, Luke. And that's a live, crazy, ridiculous, aggressive show. Rolly Romero in the house. Sitting down with Sean Porter right now. Yeah, he's Rolly, be by the way, awesome. has open shirt with abs showing. Why don't people realize he's the comedic genius I know him to be? It's sort of like asking, um, you know what, I'll save that. I'll save that one. Okay. Well, Luke, but final. no, we never got fired. Yes. We never went on the open market to shop. We knew what the plan was from the, from the minute that we were like sure Showtime was going away. We, our boss from Showtime is the guy who helped engineer this deal. He was like, I've got a plan. Let's take it into move forward. He worked with CBS to make this plan happen. That's a real thing that happened. And so here we are. So, like, everyone, I understand there was some confusion about where to watch if you live in Ireland, if you live in whatever the fuck. But if you live in the United States, DraftKings Network, no matter where you live, audio, and then soon, YouTube for everybody. If not by Monday, Soon thereafter. It's all, all right. going to be there. I want to get you really excited. Roly Romero's handler just came over and said, you guys want some Roly time? Yeah, we'd love some Roly time. You're damn right, I do. Okay, bring this genius over to me, okay? Bring the future of the one. Now, would division. it be appropriate, I mean, under most circumstances when I do this job, I would never ask a boxer this. Yes. But I feel like with Roly, it's okay to ask him what his favorite pornography okay. might be. See, okay, <laughs> let, let's answer another question. <laughs> People have questions. Will will we be more censored, less censored? Maybe we're not talking about promoters, but will we be talking about stick jokes anymore? Okay. Oh yeah, plenty. Okay, plenty. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. You get your stick jokes. By the way, Sebastian Fundora just Sebastian walked by. Fundora. Happy, happy for him though, Luke. We're happy for him. He had a phone call two Sundays ago that could change his career in life. That is true, and he took it, and it's a risk, dude. Tim Zoo is a fucking battering ram. Yeah. There's no denying it, man. He's gonna put the pressure on you. Who's that behind this camera? I can't see who's got the WBC belt. Uh, he's I don't, blocked. My view is blocked. I think he's a team member. Uh, I think he's a. I think he's carrying that. Just for some, some no, hanger no, on It might be um, the dude who's kicking off the pay-per-view card. Was it Julio Cesar Martinez? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. He is also, there. I just want to say one more time. You go to an MMA event, and everyone fucking hates each other, and there's, uh, there's just rivalries everywhere. Yeah. And you go to a boxing event, and people get together like old family members. That they haven't seen it's in like a, a long yeah, time. Yeah, it is. It is kind of like that. You know, it's not like a cookout vibe, but it's like chill hugs. Yeah, not a cookout vibe, but definitely like a, hey, man, how you been? Yeah. Well, Where at MMA, is... it's like, <laughs> yeah. You know? Yo, Leonard Eller be lingering. Let's get him in here. Yeah, I got to talk about this. Leonard! Leonard, let's Come do talk this to us. Come on, come on. Come talk to us, Leonard. You know Leonard Eller be the CEO. On. The CEO of Mayweather Promotions. Have a seat. Have a seat, one sir. One of the slickest Leonard, gentlemen. That one, that one, please. That one, please. One of the so slickest gentlemen in Just the be game careful, today. We got cords everywhere. Yeah, he's so. on the car. Oh, Carmel Moten. That's right. Okay, oh, I pronounced that. I pronounced you that doing correctly. Right, right now, because yes. you're gonna be seeing a lot of this face. Okay, this you is this be, is this kid is this is the future. This is the yes. future. Yeah. Uh, oh, how wow. how old Carmel? We gotta get, we gotta get him a microphone. Uh, I'm not sure how to do this. Yeah. They, they can probably split that to start, right? Seventeen year old Carmel Moten, two and zero, I believe, as a professional. Well, he's be Fighting his third pro fight no, Saturday. Be... Here, we'll, we'll, we'll share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Promoted by Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather Promotions. Let's start right there, Carmel. And it's great to get to talk to you so early in your career. 
when I hear people talking about like who has next or the prospects, whenever your name come up, they go, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. When did you meet Floyd in the process? When does that relationship start that's taking you now to the pro level? A uh, long time ago, when I was about eight or nine, I first uh, went into the gym. Uh, another little fighter that was at the gym at the time, I was friends with him. And uh, I, at first, I just went to watch Floyd train in one of his camps. I'm not quite sure exactly what camp. It was probably like Pacquiao or something back then. And uh, it was Floyd's camp. I just went in there to watch him. And uh, I was just soaking up game on him. And then eventually I started training at uh, May with the gym. And I was sparring like the little fighters I was there at the time. And uh, I was just, you know, all the pros in there at the time. Gave me on love, Kevin Newman. They all were seeing me. They all uh, noticed my talent. And then, all right, Kermit, uh, i got to stop you here. The Mayweather gym, the vibe is different. They find out right away what you're made of. We still call it the doghouse. No, without okay, a doubt. <laughs> talk to me about life in the doghouse when you're when you're just out of school. I mean, you might have been yeah. still in high school at that uh, moment. Yeah, I, I loved it. Uh, Real quickly, for folks who don't know, you're how old? I'm 17. And when do you turn 18? Uh, June 4th. Okay, so soon, soon. Yeah, soon. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the doghouse. Uh, I took over the doghouse. So, uh, I took over the doghouse. You heard him. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's great. You know, the atmosphere in uh, middle of the gym is great. You know, when we spar, we spar hard, but it's all love at the end of the day. We push each other. We push uh, each other to be the best versions of ourselves. So uh, that's why we on top. All right. What's the Floyd blueprint? Like when he laid it out, 17, the good news is you got plenty of time. But at the same time, for Floyd, you're planning out stages, right? We go from A to B, B to C, C. So what did he, what did he tell you was the process? What does it look like? Uh, to be the next uh, face of boxing, you know, the next uh, big pay-per-view star, you know. Uh, I'm going to keep uh, one of these fights that they're lining up for me. I'm going to keep just uh, doing my job, showing up and uh, showing out. And uh, I'm going to let them uh, handle the plan. I'm going to trust them. I know they got... Uh, my best interest in their minds. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to see what the future holds. All right, Leonard LRB, CEO of Mayweather Promotions. When you go to sell a young kid like this to the public, to whomever, what can you say about him? What makes him different than the other ones on the rise that, that, that you guys are looking at to, to provincially sign and make the face of the promotion? The mindset. The, the mindset. He has tons and tons of experience. He's been around the game for a long, long time. We've watched him grow up at each stage, you know, and he's gotten better and better, you know, and now, like I said, he hadn't even reached his man strength yet, but he's in there, he's boxing the top fighters in the entire world. He's been in there, you name the top guys around his weight class, he done been in there with everyone, and he holds his own. So with, the, with that kind of experience at this young age is that when it comes his time, he didn't already did put in the work. Leonard, is Canelo going to fight David Benavidez? Is it going to happen? In my personal opinion, yes. When? Don't know that. Okay, so give me the re what's, what's the number one reason why you have confidence that eventually it will happen? Because Canelo, I, like, I personally don't like all the talk around here that he's scared of this dude. He ain't scared of nobody. He's not scared of nobody. Fight, fight. What is it? All, all the fighters, fighters fight. That's what they do. I think that he's, he's a... A very smart businessman. He just running the money up. That's, yeah, exactly. So, so when he starts saying 150, 200 million, and then Benavides, which I thought was smart, tweeting at Turkey Al Sheikh of Saudi Arabia, just trying to say, okay, if you're about this, I can get that money. Canelo's about this life if he can get that money. Well, well, when it comes down to it, when it comes down to it, Canelo's calling all the shots. He's calling all the shots. He's been in there with. Everybody. He's been in there with everybody. So what would make him scared of David Benavidez? It's not like he's undefeated and never lost before and don't know what it feels like to take a loss. David Benavidez is a tremendous fighter. I mess with him. I'm, you, know, you know what I mean? It's like I love him as a fighter. But at the end of the day, when them two get in the ring, they got to bang it out. Okay, Kermel, 17, right? Bit of an online sensation. Right? Do you, are you aware of like to what extent there's like uh, not just buzz in the boxing community, but like in particular internet buzz, social media buzz? Are you are you fully aware of like whenever I open up Instagram or whatever, it, there's a Kermel Moton, you you name it, kind of video or highlight or something. Are you kind of aware of that? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, my uh, fan base has definitely boosted a lot, especially since I went pro. 
and I've had my two fights. Uh, you know, Floyd pumps me a lot, so that gets my name out there. And uh, even growing up in amateurs, I always had a, a, a pretty big name, especially for being just an amateur. So I'm used to it, and um, I expect my fan base to grow even more. Has someone ever said, hey, how tough can you be with braces? Has someone ever tried that? <laughs> Uh, no, nah, they never asked. They asked how I fight with braces. <laughs> just, I just got to know. Yeah, yeah, just a little custom mouthpiece. All right, Carmel, it's early in your career. You'll have your third pro fight Saturday. I can't wait to see you in person. Uh, this will be the second time now. I remember the last fight you had when it was after the card ended. I checked that one out. you are obviously got to be a brilliant mind and student of this game to be in the position. When you look at boxing right now, who's your personal pound for pound number one of the active fighters right now? Uh, I feel like you gotta go Crawford, especially after that Spence fight. Crawford, uh, just uh, he 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 showed everybody that he's the uh, best fighter right now. And then uh, I say the face of boxing is definitely take, but pound for pound, I go Crawford. There it is. All right, gentlemen, thank you for stopping by. We gotta get make room for Rolly Romero's crazy ass. <laughs> so, th so thank you for coming through. Can't anytime, wait to see you uh, fight anytime. next time. You. Appreciate you. You Here guys keep Dab up the good up. work. Y'all doing y'all thing. There it is. Thank you. From All right. The, from the lips of Leonard Ellerby to, I mean, to God's ears. One I of Washington, D.C.'s finest. That's yeah. where he is. Hey. Hey, I know. <laughs> there he is. All right. Very good. Very Appreciate good. It. So if you don't know, guys, Carmel Moten is coming on. He's coming on. Luke. Yeah. For I mean, the boxing heads know. I don't know if the MMA fans know. The but The last time Floyd know. was this excited? Tank Davis, the last time. That Floyd, is true. You know what I'm saying? That like is that, true. That matters. Yeah, that that is means true. something right there. We tried to have four microphones this morning, and it got fucked up, so I kind of had to share that one. But what are you going to do? That's okay. We make I did try. People did expect I, did I say, at this point. Did I not put in a good faith effort? Dude, not only did you put in the time and the effort, you didn't lose your shit. And I was waiting for it. I was like, you know, I was almost taking those, like, you know when someone's going to have a baby in the office, you get a pool on what day? I was like, what hour is Luke going to kill Othello? <laughs> Right? I mean, that was in play at some point today. You know? There was a couple times where I wanted to decapitate him. D just behead Othello. There's, just a, there's a time there when he was sitting around being like on his phone, just like looking at yes. pornography, and I'm like, Othello. All right, all right. Do, now, do on really, that note, we should transition. Really I believe there's a world champion. Okay, here we go. Over here. Oh, I mean, not, not many yeah. guys, not many guys like our next guest. He's partially clothed. And barely rational. Yes. <laughs> but he's lots of fun. Roly Romero. Hold on, we got to get, what the fuck is the, let me put the camera on you. Show this camera what's in the chain. What is that? Is that Isak Cruz? Oh, there he is. No, no, you're going to want to sit. Yeah, that's right, you can bring it to him. That's fine, that's fine. There oh, he is. Oh, yeah, Roly. So Roly Romero. I want to tell you something, okay? I've been standing up for you on this podcast at every turn to say one thing. You're misunderstood. You want to know why? Comedic genius. Look, look, an artiste of the dry comedy, of the of the irony, of the ironic. I mean, look, I mean, just Picasso. I mean, can I be his flavor, Flav? Please. Uh, you might be a little bit more than that. The way you keep going, <laughs> Rolly. How you doing, man? How are you feeling? You feel you got to be I'm, pretty I'm, excited. I'm, I'm very feel right now. I'm very feel right now. Yeah, co-main event. Isak Cruz, you've been trolling him the whole time. Dude, I gotta tell you, if anyone who's promoting this fight, I've been seeing your face I mean, more than anybody. I mean, in reality, we, we know who the who, what the main event is. Yeah, are, are you the A side of this whole card? I'm pretty sure at this point. All right, all right, all right. Um, Rolly, do you get down with Delta Eights and, and like gas station edibles or anything? Like, what do you do in your free time? Do you just like? Yeah, what's get, a what's a chill Rolly Romero time? How, how what, what are we doing? Do you get turn up? I mean, are you allowed in training to just like get after it? You know. Uh, you can tell us here. So this is a safe. This, <laughs> sorry, sorry. this is a safe space. I, I go to tropical islands, uh, enjoy them two, three at a time. Uh, <laughs> sometimes four. Uh, um, Rolly, people don't think that you win the fights that you win, but I see them raise your hand at the end. So what are they talking about? They're jealous because they're jealous of me because I get special privileges. Look, it's like this. Roly has plot armor. Roly has special privileges. Anything Roly wants, he gets. Just whatever. Okay. Why do you Why do you have special privileges? Help us. Help the skeptic understand why you got another like the, That sounds like I got judge special privileges to me. Okay, you know you don't mean that. No, no, no. I got. I, I was born with special privileges. I punch harder than everybody else. That's true. Like j just like that, I'm better looking than everybody else. Like I mean, would you Would you agree with that, Luke? Uh, well, the punch harding, uh, the the hard punching part. I did hear you say recently that Tank doesn't punch hard. 
Is that that can't really it, be it, true? It, the thing is, there's different kinds of power, and you know, sometimes even when you fight a puncher, sometimes the puncher has no doesn't have that power that day. But with Tank, his power is more. Uh, they catch you. With, he catch you with blind shots, and it's like sharp, you know. While mine is like, if I hit you, it's a fucking boulder. You know, yeah, it's an assault. It's, 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 yeah. There's different kinds of power. You know, there's thumping power. There's people that punch hard but can't knock nobody out. Really? Like, yeah, well, yeah that, like, they can punch you as hard as they can, right? And it hurts, but they can't knock you out because it doesn't go past. Then there's some people that... you got to turn the chin, yeah. right? And then there's some people that, that they knock you out with speed. There's some people knock you out with explosiveness, you know? Some people, like... Uh, like, And then you get people like me who just knocks you out with whatever the fuck he wants. And, and I can Bar- fucking hit you like this, boom, and you'll get knocked out. Barroso knocks people out with Social Security, right? And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That was, that was, decent. That was the on. dumbest fucking all right, joke I've heard all day. I got dad jokes. All right. R- really, no, no, I, no. That, 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 he punched hard. Like, I'll tell you like this. If there's somebody who punched hard, is is him. Ishmael Barroso. Your I, last, yeah, Barroso, the, the Venezuelan opponent you bro, have, yes. I'm that old bastard can thump, man. His face bro, looked like a catcher's mitt, but he could. Uh, yeah. Bro, I'll tell you like this, man. And that's the thing, man. When you're fighting somebody, man, I tell you like that. I looked at him, bro, and I was like, fuck, bro. I, <laughs> dude, I know for a fact, right? <laughs> When I looked at his face, I was like, this motherfucker, man, has 25 wins with 20. Now he's 26 wins with 24 knockouts, right? I'm like, you didn't get this the easy way. You you were in yeah. war. Ain't nobody ever helped you with your fucking career. There ain't yeah. no marketing behind you. <laughs> there, there, you, you were ugly. I you told you ugly as fuck. But yeah. like I said, bro, it's those motherfuckers. But like they are, they, they 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 don't they have nothing to lose, bro. They don't got a pretty face to lose. Right. Me, I don't want to get hit. Right. I really don't want to get hit. All right, Him, he don't care. I have so many questions. Yeah, let's talk about the fight, Pitbull, right? He loves to go to the body, then come over the top. He's constantly walking people down. He does the same shit. Yeah, but shit. he's small for 135. This fight's at 140, right? He's small. Uh, he's small, whatever, you know. It, 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 I don't know. I'll tell you like this. If you saw him at the last press conference, he was bigger than me by a lot. So is he really small? No. He's just he's he's big, definitely short. He's short. He's not small. He's bigger than me. Okay. Now, I know we're talking about Pitbull Cruz, but, dude, i got to get a real answer here, like the real Roly. You've been calling out Errol Spence for, like, three years. Like, in between Tank and other people, like, you, do you, like, do you mean that? I mean, you're, it's looking good now after what Crawford did to him. Well, like, bro, I that? called that shit. Bro, I'm going to tell you like this. What Crawford hit him with? call it. Bro, Crawford <laughs> hit him with a 2-1. What do I throw more than anything? Two ones. Bro. They, dude, it's like, bro, he's food for me. Could have been Roly that night. Wait, wait. Bro, that's Who's what, food? Spence? Yeah. He's been calling out Spence for like three did you, years. What's dude. It, did you hear like him and Derek James might be uh, on the outs? I'm going to tell you like this. I mean, hey, you don't leave your trainer of that many years, you know, unless something happens. So it, yeah, it, it's yeah. deeper than just training. We were interviewing Biagio Ali Walsh today. Didn't you go to high school with him? Ali Walsh? Yeah. Uh, Nick Ali? Biagio, his brother. brother. He, he does MMA. You know him? Oh, oh so yeah, he one did brother tell does me, the boxing. He did tell me his brother does MMA. I talked to Nico. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. Did you guys grow up hard in Vegas or what? I, 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 I'm not sure who his brother is. Oh, he's an MMA fighter. You'll, you'll see him on TV yeah. right there. You know, are you trying to steal this man from me? He's the yeah. most. All right, hold on. All right. Quick, quickly, quickly, Ro- Ro- Rolly. Main event prediction. Bro, that's a hard fight, man. That's a hard fight. That, that week's notice is hard, man. On both, uh, 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 it's harder on Tim Zoo though, because Fandero getting ready for somebody like like Tim Zoo, you know, same similar style. If you had to bet a hundred dollars on that main event, who you betting on? Shit, I bet for the decision. I wouldn't bet on anyone. I just bet okay. straight decision. Right. Could, could you? No, actually, no, that's a lot. I'll bet for a f- knockout. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking about that shit right now, right? No, these motherfuckers coming in swinging. All right, Roly, final question. If you beat Pitbull Cruz on Saturday, I know you're going to say when I beat Pitbull Cruz. So when you beat him, like the world, the, the could be your oyster, the world. Like you could, I mean, there's Haney, there's Garcia, there's Tank, there, there's like Shakur. There's, I know you say he's boring. Like what does this build to? What do you want next in a perfect world? Errol Smith Jr. There it is. Rolly Romero. Yes. Thank yes, you so much. Nice genius. to see you. Yes. There we have it. All right, yeah. everyone, let's reset here for a, a second. And ahead of his time right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shirtless, talking about banging two or three at a time in tropical islands. I was going to ask him if there was any chance he would favor Ukrainian women over BBLs. 
Um, we should have asked him where he was on January 6th, and if he didn't give us a straight one, it means he's an MMA fan. Yes. Hey, let's seat people over there because it's going to make it a little bit easier when they come through. Oh, very good. All right. All right. Brian Campbell, Luke Thomas here in the MGM Grand, Las Vegas, Nevada. Rolly's in the co-main event on Saturday. Rolly's in the co-main event. 140-pound title at stake. Uh, that is a good-ass co-main, by the way. It's I not quite Danny Garcia, Lucas Matisse, but it's a great-ass co-main. Okay? That's, I think the co-main's better than the main, personally. Uh, on Saturday, it might yeah. be. That, that is the fight, by the way, Rolly versus Pitbull. It is... Okay, a lot of action potential, but do you think it'll be won by boxing? Do you think Pitbull Cruz will inevitably, with the with question. the workload, just kind of outbox him with the with the volume? That's a great question. Um, I, ooh, yeah, uh, yes, yes. Gonna be a little bit of grit. Gonna be a little bit of elbow grease. Gonna be a little bit of that stuff, but but yes. You know, I take back hey, Rick Flores, come have a seat. Oh, let's bring him in hey, right here. Come hey, on. Hey, it's the voice of one championship. Oh, well dressed, sweet baby. Ray congrats on Flores. everything, guys. Congrats, Thank congrats, Thank congrats. congrats. Let's get him centered. I love on the it, man. There we go. Congrats on everything. You know, Roy, Ray, of course, is the voice of the PBC. Now the play-by-play -play man of one championship in in uh, in Asia. Shout out, by the way. Congratulations on that. Because Thank to you. be able to go, and we know this, it's hard to do to go from sport to sport at the highest level, and certainly one is a very very elite level. It's not easy. That kind of says something about a man. That, that you can pull this off like I study just like you guys, you know what I mean? I, I love watching you guys on social media, watching the show, because I, I like the variety. I, I just don't like one particular steak. I like different cuts of steak. One day I might want yes. a New York strip, other times I want a bone and ribeye, maybe a filet mignon. I like them all, man. It's combat sports. Sometimes he wants BBL, exactly. sometimes Ukrainian. You know it, man. <laughs> hey, Ray, the yes. flight, Chicago to Singapore, how long is uh, it? Well, to Bangkok, it's like 22 hours. So I take like two 11-hour flights and figure total travel. Travel time on average 28 to 30 hours. Okay, what do you do Dude, to I stay mean, how sane? Is your, yeah, how is your, first of all, that can't be good for your health. Well, right? I mean, so what I do is I get IV therapy. So I'll get an IV before I leave, the day before I leave, and then when I land in, in Bangkok, a few hours later, I'll get an IV at the St. Regis yeah, in Bangkok, pretty, that's next which level. is great. And tell me what it does for you. Like, so you what it like does is it, it just it gives you fluid, so it like the fluids will last me 36 hours, and then when I land, it helps to kind of reset your body clock. And because it's only a 12 hour, it's a 12 hour difference between Chicago and, and Bangkok, like I'm literally, my days are just flipped. So it's not that bad of a difference. When I go to like the Middle East or where it's nine hours or less, then it messes me up. But 12 hours, not too bad. I was going to say, it's probably some serious Delta 8 use or something, but maybe the IVs just revive exactly. you. Exactly. All that the mix. vitamins I don't know stuff. if you can overdose on gummies, but if I had 22 hours of flying, <laughs> yes. I would try. Hey, I, ta right. I take sleeping pills that I have recommended by my doctor, and it's nice because it'll knock me out, gives me proper you night's rest. You doctor, by the way. Uh, <laughs> can I get the number of your doctor? <laughs> Let me ask you this. Yes. Uh, we, could, uh, we could talk about a million things, but yeah. staying with MMA for a second, yeah. that's obviously a huge part of, of our fan base. Yeah. The culture in Asia... Like, how do you describe it compared to, and you've covered MMA before, yeah, you've done, you work for PFL, you've done a lot of big yeah. things. What is the difference between American sports culture and what we see in the combat circles in Singapore and elsewhere? Yeah, well, you know what? Just in, like, Lumpini Stadium, it's like there's something about that place where you just get these wars. Like, these guys just somehow, I mean, you get one or two fights on the card at least where you just get these back-and-forth fights, and the fans are just rabid about it. And here's the thing is that they're not, like, they don't use, you know, they don't drink together get to that level they they they're excited about it just because they follow it i had an uber driver pick me up to take me to the hotel after the show and he goes yeah i literally just watched the show and then turned in my uber and now i'm picking you guys up so he was literally watching the show at his house three minutes down the road and comes and picks us up like that's how rabid they are i mean it is like their national sport combat sports over there it's unbelievable man yeah, yeah, fa fa favorite thing favorite thing you've done in an Asian country, not counting prostitution. <laughs> all right. All uh, right. I, I would have, honestly, it was probably take it, uh, I mean, the, the mas proper massages, not the massages oh, you're thinking boy. about. Oh, no, but, Jesus, but, 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 but getting, like getting, getting, Bob a, Kraft, getting, getting a, great getting a nice story. Thai massage out there is fantastic. Plus, things are uh, very affordable out there. I, I've heard that. You know what the one thing I will say is I did a little bit of work with Glory, the kickboxing promotion. Of course, promotion. yeah. And here's the thing. I don't know what it's like, especially because you have to go even further. But, like, they would have shows I would go to in Holland or Croatia. I would get, like, five total hours 
over the course of a week to ever sightsee. I never got a chance to see much. Yeah. Do you get a chance to go like see shit? Not really, because you're you're so banged up when you get there. And then our schedule is like, I get in on a Tuesday. We start fighter meetings on a Wednesday. We do a full day rehearsal on a Thursday. Friday, I'm writing scripts, doing prep. And then our fights, because this is what I love about one championship. Our fights are Friday nights, prime time here in the United States. Oh, yeah. That means Saturday mornings for us. So my call time is 5 a.m. I might as well be doing morning news. So it's like I'm waking up at 3.30, we're at the arena at 5, we're on the air at 7, off the air at like 11.30, 12, and then I'm on a flight at hopefully before 11 o'clock at night. How caffeinated is Mitch Chilson? Uh, Mitch is naturally <laughs> caffeinated, man. I mean, I look, this guy will do like 75-day like challenges where no cheat meals and a workout like 90 minutes. His warm-up was like my workout. I'm like, bro, how do you do this? I mean, because he used to be a fighter. And he, he'll go and train with, like, Superbon and with Tawan Chai. I'm like, you're training with these guys? And those dudes are just different animals, man. It's unbelievable. So he just naturally caffeinated. I know that I was talking to uh, um, Mark Vasquez, PR guy, for one. Shout out to Mark Vasquez for one championship. And, and with the with Chachri and company bringing it back to the States, yes. that's going to excite. September, Denver. Yes. So pumped. That's going to hey. excite <laughs> MMA fans. That's going to excite a lot of people. Yes. For me, to get a superstar like Stan Fairtex yes. on U.S. soil again uh, and that exposure. I mean, Rod Tang is great, too. But, like, to me, Stan leaps through my TV screen yes. and grabs a hold of you, of me. Is she like that in person? Yes. What is the demeanor like behind she, the scenes? Honestly, she's the... It, Behind the scenes, she's so sweet. I mean, she's just quirky and just like a fun-loving person. But as soon as after the stamp dance is over and she gets in the ring or, or the circle, go it's go time. And she is an assassin. Talking about that card, guys, Super Lake and Jonathan Haggerty. The fight that made me lose my mind the most in recent memory was Jonathan Haggerty and Felipe Lobo. The fact that we get Super Lake and uh, Jonathan Haggerty, Super Lake and that war that he had recently. Like, are you kidding me against Takeru in Japan? Yeah. Unbelievable, guys. Both fights are going to be unreal. So, biggest difference between calling MMA and boxing is what? Because for folks who may not know, you do hosting duties. You yes. also do the international feed yeah. for the, 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 the fights themselves. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about some of the, the, the different challenges that each sport presents. Well, we, it's about just letting uh, – I like to just – I call the action more when it comes to one championship instead of, you know, there's not so much like – I'm not saying that there's a lot of lulls in boxing, but you have more opportunity to talk storyline per se because guys are being more tactical. When you're doing these, you know, Muay Thai and four ounce gloves. Oh, dude, they're, they're it's, a just, it's a fucking I mean, it's yeah. just, it's not, you don't have much time, man. Then you got guys like Rug Rug, the heavyweight, and you got Anatoly Malikin. Oh, these guys the are hammer, seek and yes. destroy, man. I don't have much time to be able to be like, and Anatoly Malikin has his son, and da 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 da. By that, I've lost like, yeah. you know, four or five moments of action. Uh, you had, uh, I don't know if you're still doing it because you're one schedule, but. Uh, I saw you pop up on amateur or collegiate wrestling, yeah. Big Ten Network, and that is a. I, I'm not as exposed to high level. We just had the national championship. Yeah, it was awesome, but man. Oh in, man, dude, that is an intensity. Yes. There. Um, and also another one that where it's like sprint. It is Break, sprint. seven minutes, yeah, man. Yeah. Seriously, I, I don't do it anymore just because of my one schedule. But I got to tell you, the coaches. And the athletes, I've never been, and, and not to shit on boxing or anything I'm doing now, I've never been more inspired in my life than by wrestling coaches and wrestlers in general. Oh, yeah, just the, I the mean, culture. Just, it's just, just, I mean, you're inspired, man, by more ways than one. Uh, we got Tim Zoo coming up, so we got to wrap yep. things okay, up. i got to ask him a question, okay? You can yeah. Do okay. it, do it. When, when, when yes. are you going to meet Hasbula? I man, that's my man. Nobody I, uh, loves him. I, I don't quite like. No, you no, no, him. no. I'm his biggest fan. I hope at some point, but he signed to the UFC, so kind of like conflict of interest. Yeah. But I'm still going to support my man. All so. right, would you rather meet Hasbula or be on season three of the Apprentice One Championship Edition? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, that's you know, chachi has been great to me, so I'd, I'd rather stick with season three. But Hasbula is a close second, guys. In Chicago, where does that fit in the uh, the, 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 the the pecking order of your love? Oh, he loves Chicago. Uh, he loves Chicago more than you love DC. Uh, that's, that's tough. I don't know if that's, I, I don't know if that's true. Now. Chicago's my town. I love I love the stuff that I see about you, my man. Yeah. And, and sorry to see you hear about you know whatever what happened with all that stuff. It's oh, don't awful, worry about man. it. It's you know, no big deal. You know, but anyways, uh, great to see you guys. Continued yeah. success. Look forward to Continued seeing you guys success. soon. Hopefully, we'll see you in uh, the show in uh, Denver. Absolutely. Later, guys. Thanks so much. Ray Flores. There he is, Ray Flores, the voice of one championship.
and so much more. Talk about versatility, he really, he really has that. You know, we always, we always rightfully <laughs> praise Todd Grisham, Mauro Ronaldo for being able to just listen, bounce from one uh, to another. He is much more well known in the boxing world than he is in the MMA world, based on just by time spent there. And I know some MMA fans aren't haven't necessarily are ready to embrace everything he's his style. Let me just tell you, and I, you can you can take care about this or you can not care about this. I care about stuff like this. Yo, that fucker grinds. Yeah. Oh grinds. yeah. Grinds. That guy lives on a plane. Lives it's, on airplanes yes. the whole nine yes. yards. All right, here we have him. Oh yeah. The man right of the here. hour. There That's is his mother. There is no name. one more important yeah. than this man right here. Tim Zhu joins us right now on Morning Combat. Tim, how are you, man? Yeah, very well, thank you. Welcome. Well, how long have you been in Las Vegas to get ready for this fight? Uh, nine weeks now. So it's been a long time. Nine away weeks. From home. Yeah. Okay. What's the worst part about Las Vegas? Be, be, you can be honest with us. Uh, we, uh, besides everything. Uh, <laughs> the the strip, uh, I don't really like the strip. I you only like the don't strip. Don't like the strip. Oh, oh like you don't. Strip. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The strip sucks. Shout out to Caesars Palace uh, Spa. They got a beautiful spa, oh, steam oh, room, hey, okay, steam room okay. and, and uh, cold plunge center there. Oh, there yeah, it is. Yeah, okay, yeah. very good. Uh, Tim, you were, you were groomed for this moment. There's no question. You act like you belong whether you have a famous last name yeah, or not. Yeah. But this is Vegas. Yeah. What does that mean to you on your arc and your journey? What does Saturday night represent? The Mecca. This is the Mecca of boxing. I think uh, every child dreams of this uh, opportunity. So for me, fighting in Vegas is uh, yeah, step one. Okay, but when they called you and they were like, okay, Keith Thurman is injured. The, don't give me the sanitized answer. <laughs> the first thing that went through your brain was? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> And bitch. <laughs> now, did they did they say he's out and we have this guy, or did they just tell you? No, no, he said he's out, and I said, so what's next? No, oh, who, just like that. Yeah, I, just that was my like next. That. Okay, so what's next? They said, oh, we can get Fundora. I said, done. Even, okay, and, and then when they said Fundora, was there any part of you that was like? Not nah. Jesus, this bastard's you know nah. seven feet tall or nah. whatever. I, mean, no. I don't know if you know this yet, but he's got nine inches longer arms and height than you. So yeah. that's, I don't care like if Vegas has you as the favorite, and they do. Like that's an adjustment period. Of course, of course. Uh, it so is. so how do you prepare for that on two weeks? One week I had one week of sparring, uh, one week of prep. But if you want to be great, you got to do this. I, I was gonna say though, it's not like there's not meaningful differences between Thurman and Fundora. There obviously are. At the same time, though, it just feels like your skill set is good for either of those guys. It's just about kind of retooling the focus a little bit. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, just adjusting, you know. you got to be, uh, if you want to be a great, you just got to adjust to what you have in front of you, you know. It doesn't matter if it's an eight-week camp with a specific guy. Just uh, one week is enough. Can we talk about, like, what appears to be, how good is the scene right now? With you at the top of it, basically for Australian boxing. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a great responsibility. First of all, we got. But why, why is it now? Why is it happening right now? I think uh, we all grew up with each other. There's a bunch of us that uh, rose through the ranks, and now we're all at the pro in the pros all together, you know. And uh, I think our work ethic, our hungriness, and yeah, we're all representing. I'm gonna quite be honest. Well, yeah. We didn't used to look at Australian boxers from the U.S. point of view with a ton. Of respect, maybe a couple of random champions. Every country's been able to, yeah. in some ways, create those identities. But he's right; there has been a culture shift. Is that Jeff Horn related? Like, do you have to give your to give him props yeah, for that? Yeah, I think it degree? started the Jeff Horn, um, and then George Cambosis came in, did a yes. did a good thing, and then uh, Jai Pattaya. Now you know, there's 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 plenty oh, of Liam Wilson, Liam right? Wilson, to Friday yeah. night against also, Liam Paro. Liam Paro's another one, and also yeah. on the MMA side too. Volkanovski. All, all those guys are blowing up at the same time. Yeah, Rob Whittaker. Yes. Yeah, the, the boys. Did you ever train with any of those guys? Yeah, I've sparred plenty of rounds with uh, Rob Whittaker actually. Oh, let's yeah. talk about this. Yeah, yeah. He's got a, dude, you see, he's got a big fight yeah, coming up. Yeah, with Hamza. Yeah, yeah you yeah, heard yeah, about yeah. it. There you go. What are you is, an MMA fan? No, not much. A little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, yeah, but right, tell, yeah. Tell them, for the Aussie guys. Tell yeah, our yeah. audience, which is very MMA focused, what what Robert Whittaker's like. What's it like to spar with him? What what's that warrior like? You know what? In all honesty, when I first sparred him, uh, because it was boxing, yeah, I'm not doing MMA. Let's yeah. just get of course, of course. Um, I got him really good. The next spar, he just sort of adapted, and he's like a true professional. You know, he just knows how to do, how to win rounds, and how to just get things done. And I was I was really uh, impressed with that. Well, you got to watch that fight when it happens in oh, Saudi that'll be Arabia. Cracker, yeah. It's going to be a yeah, big one. Hopefully, I can be there. Let's talk about yours here as well. All roads lead to Terence Crawford. Crawford. Now there's Errol Spence in the mix. 
You know? Do you think that's realistic, the oh, Spence 100%, fight? Yeah, yeah. 100%. I think Even though he might be a little bit on the outs with Derek James, we think, oh, maybe? I think, but, you know, we're, we're working uh, directly with PBC, so it's probably an easier fight to make. But whatever, man, I'll, I'll take on any, any given man. I know you don't expect to be asked this name, but I am interested on what your thoughts are on Jermel Charlo, who just recently was atop this division with all four belts and the man you were chasing. To your credit, when he was unable to step in twice, you kept the, the momentum going in four fights in 12 months. I mean, you're ready for this moment. How do you look at what happened to Jermel? You know, made a lot of money against Canelo, yeah. didn't put his best performance forward. Now he doesn't even have a championship. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it was a weak performance. He didn't come to fight, he didn't come to win. So I think his stocks actually, uh, went down from there and uh he's in a world of limbo now you know like the, the belts just uh disappeared in terms of this fight also i was just kind of thinking about it for you who would have been harder to track down it would be thurman right yes. like fundora's gonna walk into you a little bit is yeah, he not stylistically it could be that's the thing like we'll find out on fight night stylistically thurman's hard because he's always on the move but fundora's there but he's tall and he's a southpaw, so yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. How, how does Tim Zhu celebrate a big Vegas win? What, what's the plan for him after <laughs> I the fight? Don't, I don't even know, man. You don't even know? Yeah, just go to sleep, actually. <laughs> Take it nice and easy. <laughs> you drink it all? Nah. Yeah, me neither. It. it sucks. <laughs> this guy's serious about winning. <laughs> no about, shit. About creating his own legend, but speaking of the legend, your father, will he be in attendance? No, he won't be. No, he won't be. Okay. Yeah. But he'll be watching with bells Yeah, of course. Right? Of course. Absolutely, yeah. man. Are, are, what's the plan for boxing in Australia in the next year or two? Is that still part of the plan? Boxing in Australia? Like taking a big fight home. George oh, right. Kambosis. He's, he's Vegas full time. No, 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 no. I see. Yeah, I'm Vegas. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You're done. For, okay. Wow. Vegas. Yeah. You know what? It's going to be big for your career. you got a big year ahead of you, 100%. man. 100%. Big year. And, and I give you credit to how you built toward this moment. The right way, taking the right fights. I mean, if you would have fought Charlo after Gaucher, like, who would have known? No, I would have still knocked him out. So you are here today. Yeah. It's a pleasure to have you. Man. Best there he of is. luck yeah. Saturday night. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Tim Zoo. There he is. Man, he's got a head on his shoulders, a punch. No, you, know you know what? You know what? No nonsense. No. Whereas nonsense. the two of us, all nonsense. All nonsense. Team all, all nonsense. Hey, now since he's standing in front of us, dude, Othello's been tracking him down for us. Othello's right? been doing real good. He's he's almost Chris Hansening these guys, right? <laughs> just, 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 just. I mean, I'm not trying to draw correlations or there or anything, but yeah. Uh, BC. Our, I'm sorry, not BC. What am I saying? Othello. How, what do they say? Are they kill? Are the fans killing us on the thing? No, they're good. Yeah, all right. yeah. I mean, I hope the fans are with us. Look, we found out. That absence did make the heart grow fonder. That the fans are with us tighter than ever before. Would you say that? Definitely got a ton of well wishes. I can say that. Yeah, definitely got a ton of those. Um, are you interested in the idea that Jay Paquette of Nova Scotia reached out to Mark Paquette, MK fan of Nova Scotia, and they're going to have a Paquette reunion? I'm not saying it'll get intimate. I'm just saying like they're going to meet and you know exchange pleasantries and stuff. That's pretty cool. I love when our family gets together, particularly when they keep their hands off of us. Hey, let's get Dan Canobio. See, yeah, see, the, see the guy with the white hat? that guy right there. Let's Othello, get, yeah, get the guy with the white hat. We're tracking down here Dan Canobio, the co-host of Inside Boxing Live, the podcast he does with Chris Algeri, which recently moved from John Boy Media over to PPV.com, a big player in this space Saturday there night. He is. Waiting for this invite. Yes, yes. There he please is. show him, Luke. Please show yeah, him. There he, is. there there he is. is. There he is. Uh, he's also the son of the legend Bob Canobio, founder of CompuBox. And you're a longtime operator yourself. And the thing I told top Luke operator. The thing I cop, top cop operator. The thing I told Luke, and I think it's true, I think I want people to know this about the Canobios. If you disrespect CompuBox in front of a microphone, whether you're a fighter, promoter, podcaster, fan, I've heard you, you guys don't suffer fools will gladly. We'll hear about Max, it. Ex, ex Max we Kellerman. Must this house, ex you know? Max Kellerman about a trip in Puerto Rico. Did he get did he get frisky? That's all oh, I gotta wait. say. Have you noticed, like obviously I'm not in any way like gleeful that the fact that he got laid off from ESPN. But I was we were talking to, uh, about this with BC last night. He hasn't done any podcast. He hasn't done any radio. I've looked at his socials. He hasn't updated his socials. He might at all. have uh, you know one of those non-competes. But I th honestly thought he would might be in the mix for Amazon. I thought he might be in the mix for some of these gigs. I guess. Who knows? I mean, he's a very. I mean, he was bright vocal about Al a few times on camera. Well, you so was so was Jim. Lampley, and uh, yeah, he's he's involved. Uh, yeah, I, I like Max. I feel like he's uh, he was an asset to the sport, uh, but uh, yeah, he hasn't resurfaced at all and hasn't done much of anything. He's probably chilling on a beach somewhere, living large. Good for him, man. He he cashed in. Yeah. Good for him. You, Dan, I, we mentioned it as you're walking over. 
You had a good run at John Boy Media. You've added Chris Algeri to the Inside Boxing Live podcast. It is about boxing. Is it live? Yeah, it is live. Live, right? yeah. Oh, and it's shot indoors. All right, so it's a truthful title. Inside. Um, congratulations on the move to PPV.com. Thanks. We, we've always embraced you as a guy we respect and, and sort of a brother in this industry. What does that move mean for the brand? For the brand, it just means more. We're doing more shows, uh, more visibility. We're going to all the big fights. We're here. We're going to be at Canelo Munguia. We're going to be at Ryan versus Haney. Uh, we're going to be at Tank, supposedly, on June 15th. Uh, so we have. Is a, that going to be the Tank Benavides doubleheader? If I happens? love that card. Oh, Dude, if they do yeah. a doubleheader, they should. Holy shit! If that was a rich, that, they wanted Tank to be the first show for Amazon Prime, you know. But obviously, he had some issues and pers in his personal life. Uh, they went down the list. They also wanted Spence. He's cataracts and on his way here. I uh, hope he's doing well. Um, and then they went down the list and they went to Zoo. But in terms of PPV.com, it just means more, more shows, more coverage. Uh, live chat, all that stuff, all that good stuff. I just get to do boxing full time. Because at John Boy, I loved working at John Boy, but they were pulling me in a lot of different directions. I was doing baseball, I was playing baseball inside of a warehouse. I loved it. It was like Old man Dan. It was like college. I, I never wanted to leave, but I had these offers out there, and I'm like, I, I, I like, I owe it to myself to leave. <laughs> you know what the best thing about college chicks is? We get older. But they stay the same age. You're gonna get arrested. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that You're was, gonna get that arrested. Was a classic '90s, '90s meter. Yeah, I know. Up right I know. Now. We don't have it quite um, for this program. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm happy for you guys. MK oh, is you. back, thank baby. Yeah, it is. Back. I have been on maybe three or four times. I consider myself somewhat of a uh, have, guest have, host. Yes. Right, yeah. If one of you has diarrhea, I'm the first call. <laughs> that, happened that is once. common. That, did that is not. I, I love that. I hope. That I, I don't wish diarrhea on you guys. I would, that was the reason that time. I remember, right? Yeah, Luke's. You were like, "What's wrong with Luke?" I was like, "Vicious diarrhea." I was like, "Okay." What do I got to talk about? Tell me, I'm, tell us, is that a lie? Tell me I'm lying. I cannot comment on these matters. <laughs> My point being, I'm very happy for you guys. I'm happy to see you guys back in the game. I consider you guys friends. I consider you guys somewhat of mentors. I don't want to age yeah, yeah, you guys don't put out. That on us. Don't but do you that. guys are guys that I look for for advice. And, and in this game, it's, there's a lot, of cut, a lot of cutthroat in the yeah. combat sports there's media. There's a lot of MFers in this yeah, game. And yeah, and especially combat media is wild. But you guys are, at, are friends. He's never had a beef with anybody. He would never know when that. When you realize, like, not only are people that you hate very powerful and then also very stupid, but it doesn't seem to catch up with them. Hell it's of a like combination. It's the most infuriating thing on earth. You know what All I mean? Right, tell me what I'm missing here. The true face of Saturday's pay-per-view card is Rolando Romero. He's got something He's about him. He's got something about him. He, he brings a, a type of energy. To his interviews, I talked to him yesterday. He's got great energy. That's not the greatest technique. Let's be honest. I mean, he he does come to throw bombs. Both of those guys throw bombs. Did he move on from his trainer Bullet? I heard moved on from Bullet, and he's going back to Ishmael Salas, who he had some success with. Oh, Salas is a good trainer. I so like right Salas. here in in uh, Vegas, and that's a big storyline in this fight. Is that maybe they can hone in and rein in some of the rawness and get back to the boxing? Do um, you think Salas could post up Spud Webb? I was not expecting that question. I mean, he's not tall, Luke. I mean, we gotta give him. You know, we gotta Salas and Spud Webb is not two names I thought were gonna Salas be put wears together in one short sentence. Platform sneakers in the corner, and I support There's a lot that. of Canelo sad. Was a lot of sad men who wear platforms. Canelo was wearing platforms in the Mongolia. Don't say down. that. Oh, Dan, we got. Was you he wearing here. platforms, or were they just really thick? They're like soles. the Joe Biden ones, where you that stop oh, you from no, falling. No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, we had Leonard here, and we were talking quickly LRB? about Canelo Benavides. Yeah. My guy. Oh, you know, Dr. We're F friends. Uh, Uncle Phil. Not Dr. Phil. Uncle we're Phil. Friends. Major difference. We buried the hatchet. Oh, you buried it. We, Good. For, for a while, we were beefing on Twitter. Okay, he says, in no way, shape, or form is Canelo ducking Benavides. This is only about business. I overheard him say that. I mean, they do work together. Canelo is <laughs> part of PBC. Um, I don't know what's going on with Canelo. It's a hot topic right now. It's something that everyone wants to discuss. No one wanted to discuss Canelo Munguia. They wanted to discuss Benavides. There's a lot of interesting things in this. Throw in Saudi Arabia, throw in 150 million, throw in a, a, a rehydration clause, throw in Canelo Alvarez, throw in the upcoming star in boxing, I believe is David Benavides. It's got everything you want. Everyone wants to see that fight. I think it's the fight that everyone wants to see. It could potentially rival the Fury Usyk fight if they ever get inside of the ring. Like I think it's that much anticipation for that fight. Canelo has shown that he will not duck anybody. I, I, I have to repeat the, the talking points. He waited he is the man. Triple G out for two years. Yes. I went through the list. He once knocked Archie Solis' teeth out on a Guadalajara sidewalk because of a girl. He once negotiated getting his brother out of being... Yeah, that was pretty solid. I'll give him The that. night before a fight. He was fighting Rocky Fielding. I mean, anyway. There were only two fights. I don't know if you guys agree with me here. There were only two fights in Canelo's career where the public really demanded where you have to fight this guy. Golovkin and now Benavides. Cotto to a smaller degree. No, not like this. 
That's true. No one was clamoring for Cotto versus Canelo. It was That's at a, true. It was at Canelo weight. Maybe Trout. Maybe Lara, but that wasn't the Canelo that we're at now, and that's not the Canelo that we were at. I don't think fought. Canelo is scared. I just think this is such a bad look. But if it's about making the fight bigger, and if it's about not giving Benavides the feeling of control, like he's, you know, then then I guess I get it. Benavides has given up everything. He says, "I'll take five million. I'll take a rehydration clause. I'll, I'll donate my purse to a about charity." Benavides tweeting at Turkey Al that's too, that's a, that's was a kind of a desperation move, but. And then Turkey saying, you know what, I don't even want to make the Canelo fight. $150 million, and I got a lot of money, but I'm not about, I don't have that much money. But, yeah, that's the, that's the fight that I'm asked about constantly. It's that, the fight that if you post anything about it on social media or you talk about it on any show or that's in any headline, it does numbers. I just, I, I just don't like the argument. He's like, oh, you know, um, I've got nothing to prove. And it's like, well, in terms of your overall resume, that's true. Like, in other words, if he decided to just retire today, He's proven enough to get into the Hall of Fame, right? Right. But my point is, is dude, you've got the belts. That's another. You thing. have everything to prove. As long as you're going to wear those, you have to defend them. That's the guy. What the fuck are we doing there's here? A, there's a legality to it. I know the sport doesn't really like. You hear about these mandatories all the time. You hear about these interims and all that stuff. And you kind of just laugh because it doesn't really matter. But he is the guy. He has all four belts. He's been his mandatory. Benavides has been Canelo's mandatory for years now. We're not talking about just a little bit of time. We're talking years. He's like the interim champion, the mandatory. And the then Canelo said, you got to go out and beat Benavidez. I mean, you got to beat Andrade. you got to go out and beat Plant. And he went out and did it. So we're, we're kind of running. I think Canelo's kind of back into a corner in a weird way where the public is demanding it so much. And then it's also some, some titles and some of these mandatories that are also there. So I, I honestly feel like, as crazy as that sounds, Canelo is like back into a little bit of a corner here. This, this, this fall, okay? Can we do it in the sphere, or has Dana got that locked up? Dana's got Dead and Company has What's that going to look like, by the way? Are we going to be watching the sphere instead of the fights? I don't know. That's what I don't understand, because if you can see like, the U2 shows or whatever, there's the stage, and then there's all of this other stuff that's going on. That's what you're know. looking at. I, I want to know what that looks like. All right, Dan, we have to move on. They're giving me the rap sign. You're a busy Pulling man. Me, so, um, the, about to record with Chris Algeri. Going to... Where is he? He did not come on this trip. He was at some Pro Box and some other uh, stuff. He's having avocado Piece of shit. Cash. But he'll be at all the other, all the, all the other ones. Great guy, that guy, Chris the Algeria, best. right? The best. He's, he does, I, I heard that you know he, his DMs are full. Another topic for another day. Great seeing you, Dan Canobio, uh, Inside Boxing Live. Thank you, guys. Friend. Nice Compu to see you. MK forever. He'll, he'll, he'll one day inherit CompuBox. Many years from now. All right. Uh, we're going to seat them both. I don't know how we're going to do oh, this. Oh, look at this. Look at Mar this. Martin. We will do So tal? we have Isak Pitbull Cruz coming in. We have a translator, the great Martin Botter. That's that right. is the correct, not Jeremy Botter, Martin Botter. Martin Botter. 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 But this is more about Isak Pitbull Cruz fighting Roly Romero, co-main event, 140-pound title at stake. Isak what do you like the least about Roly Romero? Look, I am just going to focus on this fight because he has talked so much trash that I can differentiate anything that he has said, and I don't care. I'm going to be all about the fight this Saturday. Okay, you might not care. But every once in a while, there's like a villain in boxing that people want eliminated. It used to be Adrian Broner, and then Maidana took care of him, and the internet rejoiced. The internet, it seems, wants you to rid this sport of Roly Romero. Are you willing to do it? El deporte del boxeo tiene villanos igual. Y por ejemplo, viste cuando Broner peleó con Maidana y Maidana ganó y la internet se alegró por eso. Eh, puede ser que esto sea algo así, como que Romero es el villano y vos sos el héroe que viene a salvar el día. Sí, totalmente. Ahora sí que que Broner siempre ha sido el villano. No puedo mencionar muchos como Casado Mayor con lo hizo con Márquez, Mallorca con con De La Hoya, entonces él, él es ese tipo de boxeadores eh, apestosos de, dentro del boxeo. Uh, you're absolutely right, and this is sort of like also what Casa Mayor did with Marquez, like the De La Hoya fight with Mayorga. This is similar, and in the end, I'm going to shut his mouth up, and I'm going to be the one coming out on top. <laughs> Isak, um, we know Roly has power. What else does he have? Tell me if like, you were analyzing him as like, a boxing student. What else does he do well? Dejá de lado lo personal, en lo estrictamente boxístico. ¿Cómo eh, analizás a Roly Romero como boxeador? 
Es un peleador con, con mucho alcance, con más a, a estatura que yo, pero para eso nos preparamos para contrarrestar todo ese, ese, ese poderío que nos voy a dar. Uh, granted, he's taller than me, he has more reach than me, and that's why we really have honed in on in trying to counteract those physical advantages that he may have. What, what did you learn from, uh, you probably have seen it, the fight that Roly had against Ismael Barroso? What did you see in that fight? What did you learn about Roly as a result of that? ¿Qué conclusiones sacaste de la pelea de Roly contra Barroso? Eh, pues hubo mucho que sacar de esa pelea y en eso trabajamos tanto como en sus fortalezas como sus debilidades. I really didn't have that much to take away from it, but I can tell you that I have certainly uh, gotten a good hold on what his strengths and his weaknesses are. This fight is at 140 pounds. It's for a title, but When we're looking at your career arc, you you could offer this. Does this fight with a victory get you back to Gervonta Tank Davis? Bueno, esta pelea es por un título en las 140 libras. Eso no se cuestiona para nada. Pero sentí que si ganas esta pelea, te vuelve a meter en la conversación para una revancha contra Gervonta Davis. Ojalá sea así y nosotros vamos a seguir haciendo nuestro trabajo para ver la posibilidad si hay una segunda. Eh, revancha una segunda pelea con Davis y si no me voy a seguir enfocando en mi carrera en que sea exitosa. I truly do hope so. Uh, you, you know, I want to be able to be considered for a rematch against Gervonta Davis, but if it doesn't happen, you know what? No big deal. I'm going to focus on my own career and keep going forward if it doesn't happen. I like that answer. I like that. Let me ask you this though. You pushed Tank Davis further than really anybody has. You went the full distance. You lost a very close decision. Why were you more effective in ways that his opponents have not been? Vos empujaste a Gervonta Davis más de lo que cualquier otro lo ha logrado. ¿Qué es lo que vos hiciste para que ser para ser más efectivo que nadie contra Tank? No dejarlo hacer su pelea y enfocarme en mi plan de trabajo. I just didn't let him do his kind of fight, and I focused on my work. In terms of how you want not just this fight to go, but imagine that what, what day is it today? It's the 28th of March. Imagine if we spoke in one year. Where are you in the sport in one year? Estamos en el 28 de marzo de 2024. ¿Cómo ves a Isaac Cruz el 28 de marzo de 2025? ¿Cómo te imaginas a vos mismo a esta altura del año que viene? Pues consolidado, siendo ya campeón del mundo en igual en 140 o y en 135 y peleando ya con los grandes nombres. I see myself consolidated as a world champion at 140 at 135 as well, and consistently fighting against the best fighters the world has to offer. D you both actually have a common opponent in Gervonta Tank Davis. Davis finished him, you went the distance. Does that tell you anything? Uh, ¿Acaso el que vos hayas llegado a la campana final contra Gervonta y que a Roy lo haya noqueado Gervonta, eso quiere decir algo o nada? Eh, pues no, ahora sí que esa es un, un capítulo entre ellos. Y yo vengo a hacer una nueva historia con él y bueno, yo lo vengo a noquear también. They wrote their own chapter and what I can tell you is that just like Gervonta knocked him out, I've come to knock him out too. I, lo I love this man right here, okay? Uh, huevos, yeah, definitely. Man, um, you have a reputation for being a badass. Fans love the way you carry yourself. Where does that come from? Because you, you have a no fucks attitude. Can you translate that? No fucks attitude. Que, eh, les, les encanta que tenés una actitud así, no de fanfarrón, sino de que a la gente le encanta que vos tenés confianza, que te manejas como tal y que nada te importa una mierda. Que la verdad que, que, estás, que estás a full y que, y que no te importa una mierda lo que el resto haga porque vos la tenés clara. ¿Qué, qué tenés para decir sobre eso? No, pues ahora sí que somos profesionales y no nos gusta hablar toda tipo de mierda ni de basura, sino expresar de lo que estamos hechos, que somos grandes peleadores arriba del ring y no abajo. Look, if it was up to me, uh, we're, we're all pros. I would rather not have to talk so much shit, not have to talk trash, and in the end, show, show our worth inside the ring. But if I have to outside the ring, I'll talk as much shit as I need to. Oh my God. Uh, my Mexican boxing hero is El Terrible, Eric Morales. Um, the, what balls he has. Who is your Mexican boxing hero and why? Su ídolo boxístico era Eric El Terrible Morales, que tenía unos huevos tremendos. ¿Quién es tu ídolo boxístico? Pues no tengo un, un, un ídolo en específico. Me gusta mucho Mike Tyson, Manny Pacquiao, Márquez Barrera, este, Morales, Sánchez, o sea, mucha, mucha variedad de boxeadores.
I don't have an, an idol in particular, but I do have role models like Tyson, like Pacquiao, like Morales, like Barrera, people that you know that I have looked up to and that now I hope to emulate someday. With Manny Pacquiao being a promoter, what is that like for the kid in you to, to have that relationship with him? ¿Qué te genera el tener una relación profesional con Manny Pacquiao como la que tenés, que me, me imagino que hace 10, 15 años no te lo hubieses imaginado? Pues es una, una motivación y un sueño inesperado, por lo que comentas de que nunca lo, lo imaginé estar tan cerca con Manny Pacquiao y ahorita es una alegría muy grande. It's a great source of pride, of happiness, like you said. When, when, I was, when I was younger, I would never have imagined that I would be this close to Manny Pacquiao. And look at me now, it's a dream come true. Well, now you're this close to a world title. Isak Pitbull Cruz, we can't wait for this fight against Roly Romero on Saturday. Best of luck, great to meet you, sir. Thank you, thank you. And Martin Botter, congratulations on Argentina winning the World Cup. You can stop celebrating, thank you. Never, I'm never gonna stop celebrating. <laughs> Oh, very yes. Good, very good. Oh, yes. All right. What a badass. Thank what you, Martin. Absolute badass. Yeah, bro. I was talking about Martin. Yeah, I know. Well, both of yeah. them. But, <laughs> dude, Isak looks like, uh, woof. He, no, no, I mean, I don't know how, you, I, I have to ask Martin how he translates. I've never, I don't know how you would translate no fucks given. Yeah, NF, NFG, no Fs given right there. Hey, we're Morning can you, Combat. Uh, can you fix the screen? Can you adjust it a little bit? We are live here at the uh, media room if you're just joining us here. Radio just, Row. Just rotate it, yeah. Zoo versus Fundora, PBC on Prime Video. The pay-per-view goes down Saturday night. T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. Shout out to the MGM Grand Resorts for the hospitality and hospitality in this premier boxing champions event. And Luke, do you have any like weird emotional attachment to the idea that Showtime Sports 37 years, the last you know, decade or so with, with, with Al Heyman at the helm of providing the fights. It's sunset. We were there for the end, but now we're here for day one of PBC on Prime Video. I mean, it, it, I'm it's emotional a, about what it's done to my bank account. Uh, yeah, I mean. that part's not the best, <laughs> but it's a lot of the same folks and it's, it's certainly the same, you know, <laughs> fighters, but um, there's still like you want to come out and, and, and bang on the first night, right? I mean, on, uh, on the new channel. You want to come out and... I yeah, mean, we got it's, more tough, that, it's tough that they lost uh, the headlining fight. It is tough. Um, that's not going to be easy to overcome, but... Their decision I'm glad not they to add yes. Campbell to the broadcast team. That's really what we're trying to get down to the bottom to of right Cam now. There, mean, there, was a, there was a gigantic Campbell omission. <laughs> I noticed that. I was looking at this. I'm like, no Brian, no Brian, no Brian, no Brian. No Brian. Well, it turns wow. out no Brian at all, but uh, okay. very happy to be here on right. Radio Row. But, um, I mean, that's going to kick off the prime era, Luke, and that will continue with Canelo versus Jaime Munguia May 4th. That's a big one, yes. Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. We'll be there what, for that, by the way. What do you think about the rumors of this June card, which could be Tank Davis Dude. versus Frank Martin in the main event? And then Gvozdik and... Uh, Vodzik Bene against David Benavidez. Vodzik's a former title holder at 175. This would be for a vacant title. That's some that's some uh, variety dude, right there. That would that be is. fucking um dude to have a double header with two of the most exciting frankly most exciting fighters in boxing. Two I'm yes. not saying they're I'm not saying they're one and two. I'm saying make a list of 10 Tank and Benavidez are going to be on that list, right? Gu guaranteed. In a way is on that list. There's a you know, Crawford's on that list. There's a bunch of guys on that list, but to put them together and I would say obviously Dude, you know what's amazing to me? Like the, the and I, never, I never know how to pronounce it. Gvozdik, Gvozdik, however you want to say it. His situation is different because he's obviously not at his best anymore. Yes. But so he's, I have, he had a brief brain bleed that led him into retirement. Yes. Then it was cleared. Yes. He's come back. But he's got, he's got like that Vicente Luque situation yes. kind of going on. But the thing that kills me is when people are like, oh, Frank Martin's not all that. I'm like, like oh, Tank's uh, going to fight another Uber driver. I'm like, yeah, dude, not, not are you out of your fucking mind? Maybe Uber XL. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like uh, either way, dude, Frank Martin is a very talented Derek fighter. Derek James trained fighter. Another Derek James. He has one of the best pull two counters in the lower weight classes. Go look at his fight against Michelle Rivera. Amazing performance in that one. Really just completely outclassed the guy. He, he did get a lot of he hell and he hate for it. He fucked up the Shakur Stevenson thing, and I don't know what happened there. I don't know what the story is. It did look like a duck. However... Dude, if you're Frank Martin and you missed out on Shakur Stevenson... You were obviously told you're in the sweepstakes of Gervonta. You, you clearly got told, and now he's going to fight Gervonta. And this is not like the UFC where like Michael Chandler's waiting on Conor McGregor. It's not going to change his pay at all. It's going to substantially change Frank Martin's pay. So you get to take on a guy that people think is a potential 
I, there's a debate about how good Tank is, but he's obviously very good. One of the pound for pound best in the there world. There you go. And he's clearly the biggest star that he could, that of all the available names he could fight, that's the biggest one. So well, Carmel Moten called him the face of boxing. I know that's Frank Martin. All, no, called oh, uh, Javante. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I know they're all in the same family, but yeah. still, that's. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, but this is my point. It's like, dude, people calling Frank Martin an Uber driver is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. That's absolutely not true what in do any you, way. Do you like that decision, though, by Benavidez to, okay, Canelo, not now, then let's go up and let's get some clout, let's get some leverage elsewhere. Let's let's put me in the beef all better beef conversation suddenly. Well, look, I'll tell you this. Benavidez fought after Crawford, did against Spence, and he's going to return before Crawford does. Because he wants that shit right now. Because he's out there. Agree- Granted, they're in different stages of their career. I'm not saying they should behave the same. What I'm just trying to point out is, dude, Benavidez is like, next, 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 next. He's so fucking exciting. And by the way, they just put it up this week. If you missed his fight against Andra, I call him, okay. I always do it because of the Andrade. Brazilians. It's, it's Jessica Andrade. It's Demetrius Andrade. And he's not Brazilian. He is uh, Cape Verdean. He, okay, but he's basically American. The point I'm trying to make is, they just put that up for free on the PBC YouTube channel. They put up the one for Caleb Plant. Go watch those two fights and tell me that fucker is not exciting. Dare you. Then watch the post-fight interview after Andrade and tell me that <laughs> fucker on the mic wasn't exciting. Right? Wow. <laughs> Send that over to Mr. Heyman. All right, there we go. Othello, how that. much farting have you done on Othello, this trip? Othello, can we get Sean Porter? I love that man. Sean Porter, the guy in the backpack? Yeah, with two-time the former welterweight champion. White shirt, black hat. He's jacked. He's a great broadcaster. Yeah, yeah. By the way, one of the nicest people in, in Sean combat Porter? sports. Sean Porter? Do you not know that? Who's the nicest fighter we've ever dealt with? Um, Arnold Allen's up there. Oh, yeah, dude. Arnold Allen's like, like... All the Brits were really quite friendly. He's so wholesome, Arnold Allen, in a way. Yet his dad just injects people right in the a-hole, right? I don't know if it's quite in the butthole. Do you but... think that he, if we asked Pacer to whether we could do the fleshy cheek or the actual bullseye, he'd be into that? Sean, Sean, thank you. Here thank comes you. Sean Porter. Showtime Sean Porter, host and nice entrepreneur of the Porter Way podcast. What happened? You've been working out, man. Yeah, a little bit, man, a little bit. It takes yeah, one to bit. know one, Sean, okay? You know what bit. I mean? It takes one jacked fella to know another. Um, I'm sorry. You, you, you I was pumping you up. <laughs> you have a entertaining podcast that you do big things with. You're at, like, every fight. Can we say this to everyone? They know it already. You're at every fight. You got you got kids? You got kids? Oh, congratulations. Oh, yeah. What? what would you, can you say what you named the newborn? Sure. Okay. These, okay, are these biblical names? Because these are beautiful. Yeah. These also have like seven or eight syllables each. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> More syllables than, than yeah. Something like that, yes. How are you doing, Sean? Doing great, man. Yeah? Yeah, doing great. No, so let's back up a step. Where are, I can never quite tell. I always see you, but I don't, I don't podcast aside, on the broadcasting end, sometimes I see you on this broadcast, sometimes I see you on that one. What's your deal currently? My deal is I'm Able to um, move in a in a in a and get myself into a position that, you know, e- even when um, when I'm not there with my podcast, somebody feels my my presence is necessary. So, yeah, uh, your um, presence is very necessary. I am. Uh, it is unexclusive uh, to say the least. Okay, yeah. you hear that, broadcasting people? I, I did time with you on NBC yes. Sports as former Ring yes. City USA, and I always say this. I've said this in many. You said this to me many times. Sean Porter, the worst. No, <laughs> That's what, I, always, what I always say, and I've told many TV execs this on your behalf because because I, I love you, is you sell for me as your co-announcer when we work together in ways that you don't have to as X fighter sitting next to this keyboard warrior jerk, and I appreciate what that. You mean Sean. sell? I mean sell like. Okay, I got dad jokes and they don't always hit. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll, t- I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what it is because. I, through this, through working with him, I come from the MMA side, so through him, I've had to get you know, crash course into boxing. <laughs> yeah. It's not. I would never have guessed that, too, by the way. Is that right? Yeah, oh, you're pretty okay, okay. Sharp. Look. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. But I, what I was going to say was what he told me about you was sharp technical analysis, right? That's part of it. Yeah. But there's a certain joy in your voice yes. when you talk <laughs> about boxing yes. that I'm not saying other people 
not everyone has to commentate the same. Yes, yeah, sure. But there's a certain joy that you communicate to the audience that I picked up immediately when you when you broadcast it. When I turned pro as a fighter, I sat down in the room and I tried to figure out like what can I do to get people to recognize me and want more of me. I sat there in a room meditating, trying to figure out dead silence for like two hours, literally. And when I when I I was just I got nothing. Literally, this is what I said. So I got nothing. I guess I'll be myself. And it ended up being oh, the best yeah. thing that I could have done as a fighter. So when I started to get into the commentary and stuff like that, same thing. I had a conversation with myself before we started doing the, P the Inside PBC. Looked in the mirror and I said, give people the best of you. Because yeah. whatever they see on this first episode, this is what they're going to expect. Just be yourself. The same way I made that decision. So when you talk about the joy and this energy and things like that, it's really just who I am. Like, I'm like this at home, which is kind Dude, of... I'll tell, tell you what, you know what's kind of interesting is, you may not appreciate this, but certainly, again, from the MMA side, lots of MMA fighters, like, we're talking, like, high-level ones, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have YouTube channels and whatnot. Oh. In boxing, it's like you... And I'm not sure there's anybody else. <laughs> it's really <laughs> him and Ellie. It's like him and Ellie. And that's it's like, it. dude, you're so far ahead of the curve. Just by it's also partly a talent, partly hustle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Partly yeah. Like, a lot of hustle. Every fight. Yeah. Partly, every partly, fight. Like, yeah. partly looking around like no one else is doing Should it. Should I stop going to every fight? <laughs> <laughs> Keep going every fight. Yeah, I want everybody to say like he said every fight. Like I, I want them to say it in a good way. Like, <laughs> that was a compliment. Come but on. see, the difference there is a lot, and no disrespect to boxers, but most UFC and NBA MMA fighters have what background? They have collegiate background. Collegiate wrestling they, or whatever, yeah. Collegiate re wrestling and things like that. So a lot of them are educated beyond just high school and the, and the list goes on. So a lot of them have aspirations outside of their sport. Most boxers grow up, this is all I want to do. This is, I want to be a world champion, you know? And not very many aspirations outside of that. I'm telling you guys, like everything I've ever wanted to do in life, I'm literally doing all of that right now. And on top of all of that, I'm I'm working on getting the movie funded right now. So if oh, wait, oh, a, a feature film, a movie on your life. Sick? No, 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 not. So I'm working on a documentary. So the doc will be done like this summer, this this fall. Okay, so okay. Uh, the doc will be done soon. But the movie is a feature film, uh, a fictional movie based on a boxer. And, this is awesome. And the writer said, man, I want I want this to happen, man. I want the, the main character to be betrayed by an actual fighter. So that's me. So are you taking acting lessons? I mean, you kind of already have this natural charisma, obviously. It's, it, a lot of it's natural, man. Honestly, man, a lot of it's natural. I do. I, I'm not afraid to say that I'm a Christian. I believe in God. And I really do believe when God built me, he said, man, pick something. And everything that I picked, man, has been right, pretty accurate. So we're going to go for the act, acting thing. And um, it's like a six six million dollar uh, budget. Oh, congratulations! Um, Let's so. talk some fucking headlines, shall we? Yeah. No, you don't skip over that. He's just gonna make a I movie. I know, I know, but I want to talk about. I want to pick his brain. Can I pick his brain? You can pick my friend. You can brain. pick Go your ahead. nose. Okay. How about that Thank asshole? You. All right. Canelo. Yes. Benavidez. Yes. Not gonna happen. Okay, we had LRB up here a minute ago. He was like, it's definitely happening. Oh! LRB said he is not ducking him. This is about business. And LRB would LRB is LRB's argument is the same one that B-Hop had, which is. He's just waiting for someone to come around with the biggest possible offer. Which, if that's the case, fine. Canelo is waiting on someone? Yes. 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 Which, there is generational money coming out of certain countries these days. Yeah. That, oh, which, there you go. Which, if, if that's the case, fine. But my point is, like, every reason... Real quick, though, the issue with that is PBC wouldn't get that. Like, that, if that goes over there, then, you know... We're kind of missing out. Unless so. the journalists can lose their head, but I think we're past talking yeah. about that. You, yeah. get, you, get that. you get that bone saw, <laughs> and then you just have real fun over there. Uh, in all seriousness, what I'm trying to point out is, for example, when he fought Kovalev at 175, he wanted all the credit for doing it. Now he's like, oh, well, what am I going to get with Benavidez? It's just 25 pounds more. And the other one, too, that I brought up with Dan Canobio, he's like, I don't have anything to prove, which is true in the sense that Imagine Canelo retire today, right? Hall of Fame, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're going to hold the motherfucking belts, yeah. dude, you gotta defend yeah. them. How is this not like? Uh, yeah. I don't understand. He, he, you know, um, I, there's no secret. He took a lot of pages from the Mayweather uh, playbook after he fought him. We saw a, a change in his style that we hadn't seen. We hadn't seen a lot of the things that he had done prior to fighting. Uh, Mayweather. We saw more defense from him after he fought Mayweather. We saw more movement after he fought Mayweather. He also tried to take pages out of the business book as well. He waited too long to fight Canelo or to fight Benavidez. He should have got Benavidez four years ago. He should have got Benavidez maybe five years ago. Four or five years ago, Benavidez, we didn't 
he didn't know Benavidez was going to be where he is now. He didn't my, have the stamina back then either. But when you, look at, when you look at when Mayweather fought him, Mayweather said, I'm going to knock you off right now. You're not going to get there before I get you. You know, so. Missed the final lesson. Dude, the first, yeah. very first go. event that I covered for Showtime was, we, now granted, this was the one where they were doing it in the Mohegan Sun during at the very beginning of COVID or whatever. Yeah. And uh, he missed weight. It was the first one. My first interview with David Benavidez was he missed weight oh, yeah. and then sat down with us. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this is off to a rough fucking start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was the window right see, there. See, and, and that was the window. But when you are showing signs that you're a knucklehead, that you may mess up yourself, obviously Canelo thought that he was going to mess it up himself, and he didn't do that. And now he's in the worst position. He cannot beat Benavidez. It kind of is what it is. I wow. think he knows that. And I think that that's why he won't get in the ring with him. We will, we will not see Canelo Alvarez versus David Benavidez. That'll be a stain, especially when you're the undisputed champion for multiple years. It's a stain, which is crazy because he's literally fought. Everybody says I fought everybody. No, Canelo has fought everybody. And outside of Mayweather, he's beat everybody. However, if you don't fight David Benavidez, this stain is like bigger than just about everybody you fought. All right. So. All right. Uh, you just said that you fought everybody, and, and that is a part of your reputation. We'll get back to the headlines in a second. Separate from the stuff that means more to you, faith in your family, what do you hope your like legacy is? Because your great career is over, you're transitioning now and moving on, and you're doing you know amazing things, you're not leaving the sport. But like, I don't even know if you think about that. We think about that all the time as journalists and podcasters, but do you think about like what's the one sentence that explains Sean Porter's career? Well, um, I think I, this is what I do think. People have said I'm a first ballot Hall of Famer. I'm like, I don't know. First ballot, Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. So I'm going in this year, first ballot Hall of Famer, to get into this one. The International Boxing Hall of Fame, people have said, your first ballot, I'm like, man, I don't know. And then I always think to myself, I was like, but, you know, personality doesn't really mean a lot, but people, it's gonna be hard for them to overlook everything that I did on, in boxing, plus just who I was and who I've been as an athlete and as a person in general. So I really think that Overall, that's really what I want people to re remember me for is just being a good person and a, and a, and a, and a good athlete in this okay, sport. Okay, but so. as a fighter, it's you took on all comers, all man. The, so to that point, the crazy thing is hearing people say, yeah, I'm trying to show him the Sean Porter style. I, we, my dad and I, we were just doing what we did, and we were doing the best that we could. But to know that people are now looking at what I did as something that they should do, as let me show this technique and, and name this the Sean Porter style, that to me is amazing. Dude, I'll tell you what, like obviously this is a slightly different thing, but one of the things I love about your career is that, you know, but win or lose, you t fought tough fucking guys. Yeah. You were pretty active. There wasn't like a lot like a lot of periods of inactivity. Yeah. And someone was making a point like on uh, Twitter the other day, they were talking about what's happening with heavyweight boxing in Saudi Arabia. And these, they're getting fights booked like one right after the other, mm -hmm. event after event. You know, we had Big Big Bang, Big Bang Zhang coming off of a loss. Yeah. And Deontay coming off of a loss. Yeah. And they're like, fuck it, get him right back out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, dude, if you fight like that, the fans will be much more forgiving. Why is everybody sitting around nowadays? Here's the problem. The problem is this generation doesn't know about the 70s, 80s generation outside of the names. They don't know how how active those 70s and 80s Kamel Moton has braces. Were, huh? Yeah. Kamel Moton has braces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's such a little kid. Yeah, well, yeah. He d but they don't know how active these guys were. Now you're in a generation where I think we're coming out of this generation, but when when, when Floyd became Money Mayweather yeah. and made it all about belt, all about belts, all about legacy, all about money. Now this is this is what this generation has learned. So this generation is trying to figure out how do I be active, make money. To keep my O when the list goes on. So it's really just this generation is having a hard time really connecting the dots. My thing was, I'm not, I already know that I'm not going to be here for a long time. Um, this isn't the only thing that I want to do in life. So I'm going to try to get all this in and do as much as I can, as quick as I can. I like to tell people, man, I was running to the finish line when I turned pro. And not not a lot of fighters say that. Not not A lot of fighters, there's no finish line for a lot of fighters. There definitely was for me. All right. I, I, you can get up and walk away if you have to at any point. We love this, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. I love it too. Is it Ryan Garcia trolling the audience or does he need serious help? Man. Or is it bold? Dude, he, I don't I mean, know what to do. How is this don't a fucking know. conversation? Hold on. Don't know. It is so fucking clear he has... Some, some form of mental illness, drug addled or not, I do not know. I'm obviously not in a capable position to make a proper diagnosis. But the idea that this is some giant 
foot on yeah. seems so fucking ludicrous to me that yeah, I he's can't making statements that I'm uh, waiting for him to get sued by celebrities. <laughs> right, like, right, know, right. He's right. Like, no, this guy's on the Epstein list, dude. That you don't get away with that. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. Um, I think you know, and again, to that point, I'm gonna be kind of short with it. To that point, but I think that I think that he's taking it to another level. So. Trolling in a sense, yes, because he's amped it up to that level. But I do think that there's definitely some things he's battling. Um, one thing that, that stands out to me as a Christian looking at another kid, young man, who calls himself a Christian. I'm not saying that he, he's not a Christian, but I know personally that it's very hard to juggle real life, Christian life, entertainment life, Christian life, athletic life. Christian life is very hard to juggle. And when you are in the position that he's in, it's I'm sure it's amplified, you know. So I think that he's definitely struggling with some things. And um, I'm hoping the best for him, uh, obviously, outside of this fight. Um, I've heard a lot of people have, is, is this fight even going to happen? Yeah, the, unfortunately, boxing, they, they'll roll you to the ring in a wheelchair. I thought for a they second can. the commission might have stopped it. Because, you know, New York. They're real. They pulled, for example, they didn't let Margarito fight uh, Pacquiao, so they had to move that fight to Texas. Mm -hmm. So you know, since the the Magomed situation, the heavyweight yeah, fight, so, they, so they're a little bit very... different. I will tell you, this is the thing I'm worried about. People are like, oh, how troubling are his tweets or whatever? They're weird. Yeah. What I'm worried about is, let's, dude. Let, I mean, okay. Again, what do I know? I don't know. I feel like Devin Haney's going to tune him up, and what's he going to be like after getting tuned up? With a potential like you know brain injury or getting his shit rattled, yeah. like however bad it is, I feel like it's like could get set up for be way worse yeah. going forward. Yeah, I, I mean I look at it. Um, I have a small psych psycholo psychology background, so I look at it in a lot of other different ways. And one of the ways that I've really I'm convinced is when you have the history of some with someone for so long, they have like six fights in the amateurs. We all we know about that that um, that history, but my thing psychologically it doesn't leave you so you'll be in the ring and you can connect to things based on experiences that you may not be able to connect to if you don't have those experiences example tank davis this this guy everybody tells you to fear this guy the same way you're talking about Devin haney now Devin, oh he's so fast and he's got power he's moving up to 140 but in the back of of Ryan's mind, yeah, that kid, I fought him before. All right, I know what he's – so you, you don't look at that beast the same way everybody else does. So I truly do think that he's going to be able to connect to some things psycho psychologically and possibly have some success that other people don't expect him to have. Can we get an Errol Spence rejuvenation at 154 pounds? I hope so because I've always loved covering Errol. One of my favorite fighters style-wise – you were friends, a foe for, for the fight against him. Which, by the way, no one talks about how great Porter versus Spence was. Gave it to him. Fight. Gave it to Holy him. crap. <laughs> had, had, the, had Errol very undisciplined. He was very. to keep up with what you were doing. I know? don't like that everyone's matter of fact. He's never going to be the same. He can't come back. Blah, 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 blah. Obviously, that wasn't the best version that it could have been of him. But take nothing away from one of the most brilliant boxers ever in Terrence Crawford. But... Spence can come back and reinvent himself at 54. This is, what are we talking about? I here? actually do believe that. I think I'm sure you guys have probably seen that tweet. He's he's on his way to Vegas. He wants the winner. I, I love either fight for him. I think that he handles the job against either of those guys. And as I told my colleague over there, outside of Terrence Crawford, this dude can still be a thing in boxing. And I think it, there's a resurgence at 154. If anything, we'll find out just in truly, truly how – uh, healthy he is physically and 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 you know psychologically and this goes on. So, right. dude, a last thing for me on this one, the Errol Spence one, man. I was, um, dude. That, I mean, I know the Ugas fight. There was a break between that and the Crawford fight. Was there any part of you that was shocked at how one-sided it was? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And and so Terrence and I were friends. He looked at me like, and I'm like, bruh, like I I know who you are. I got in the ring and I did it, but I still I knew who he was, and I didn't. Think it could be that lopsided after the first round i had dane lillard sitting right like right behind me and to the left and i turned around and looked at dane i said i said yo because the first round was an arrow spence round i said i said yo he just set him up because I, I saw it i said he set him up and in the second round he gets the knockdown i look back and i said that's what he set up he got the steam, the steam engine rolling in the first round and just used it against him. And something we already knew, I think, should have known about Errol, he's not the switch-him-up kind of guy that he 
quote unquote convinced us that he was when he fought Mikey Garcia and he outboxed Mikey. It was working, so you stay with it. It wasn't that you are this magnificent boxer. It was working against a guy that was outmatched and didn't know he was outmatched and you stuck and you stuck with it. Yeah. With me, you gritted and grinded it out and it became what it became. But against Terrence, you ha you got to be able to do a multitude of things through 12 rounds, not e not even 11 or 10 rounds. You got to because you were brilliant for about seven rounds. You were brilliant against Terrence. <laughs> I, you got to say that and it, his game plan, and it, the and shape it, you were and in, it just yes. caught up to me. You got to be you got to be able to switch it up, you know. So outside of Terrence Crawford, though, I think he has a resurgence to his career. All right, one final question. You've been so generous with your time, and I appreciate it's you. What, it's <laughs> why you are one of the nicest people in this entire game. Yeah. We just signed with uh, with DraftKings. We're moving our podcast away from CBS Sports to Metal Arc, DraftKings, all the smoke production. If I get a call in a couple of months that they're not going to renew us, yes, I'm coming after you. Oh, yeah. Okay, I well, I was going to say that I saw you on a DraftKings commercial sleeveless and the guns were still popping. True or false? You've been did working you, out? Did you, been working did you do out. any curls I didn't do any push in the final before. minutes before <laughs> No, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't. Funny you asked that because I've done like commercials and stuff like that in the past, and my dad was would be there. He's like, hey, drop down and get some pushes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like get the pump, son. I'm get the pump. Got to like, blow him up. Got to blow like, him up. <laughs> he's like, you got to get a go. I didn't do anything for that one, and it, it kind of worked out. So Hey, uh, <laughs> plug, so for the MMA fans watching, why don't you plug your podcast? Yeah. And, and let me just say very quickly, gets the LTBC uh, seal of approval. Oh, my God, If you're yes. looking for a boxing yes. podcast you can trust, entertaining, comprehensive, this is the one. Thank right you, here. man. Thank you, man. The Port Away Podcast. It's like I always like to say, we we bring entertainment to a sport that is an entertaining sport, but doesn't know it. Most of these fighters don't know they're entertainers. Most of these managers don't. They don't try to put promoters don't try to put together an entertaining event. They try to put together good, exciting boxing matches, and then that's it. So we uh, are a boxing-based podcast that brings a lot of entertainment. We're trying to get into the acting, into the, the rapping. Guest list too. Yeah, we're, we're trying to up our guest list. And I think by the end of this year, we'll, we'll be in this, this really sp special position for boxing where we're bringing on, you know, the elite in a, NFL, say, NBA. We hit both on. audiences in the combat sports, MMA and boxing, but it's really hard to have street cred in boxing with like a <laughs> podcast or a show. But yeah. I think because the audience is so split, but I think your podcast gets that sort of universal rec re you know, reputation that there's some real talk. That, uh, yeah, and that's what that's what I'm trying to do. You know, um, that's kind of where I come from, so I get it. And then um, the thing that I didn't know is everybody watches boxing. So I'm like, everybody knows me without me even knowing them. Cameron, uh, they're losing it. They were in the midst of changing studios. And, Cam, Ron, uh, and Mace. Cam and Mace. They were yes. in the midst of losing their studio, something along those lines. And I had uh, Gilly, the kid, on my podcast, and he said he called him right there on the spot. And I heard him say Cam, and I was like, and then I heard him say Killer. I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute, did you just? And he's like, Yo, you gotta come check out this 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 studio. This might work for you. Next thing I know, he ends up Cam ends up on the show as well. So. Man, God that's just great. keeps blessing us, so that's what yeah. we're trying to well, do. Well, hell of a guy, hell of a boxer, hell of a podcaster. The Port Away Podcast, we, 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 we stream live doing all of the big fight weeks. And then, on YouTube, uh, that's the best place yes, to find Yes, sir, and, okay. then we, and then we we put out an episode every Tuesday. He had a sponsor back in the day called Ultimate Sack. They were giant bean bags. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that fits our shows. Mark. We should be Ultimate Sack. Ultimate man. Sack. Yes, yes. I, will, I will put you in contact. Sean, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Continued hey, success. If you can. Lose the deal with DraftKings if you can. Lose that deal. Well, we just signed it, so <laughs> it's going to be a while. Good luck, guys, man. I love Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, Sean. Thank you there he is. Much. There he is, the man, Sean Porter. He's we appreciate future, it. He's uh, uh, getting to the movie game right here. Okay? Hey, All listen, right? big things. Big I was things. hoping he was going to do a movie on his life. Who should have played him in Hollywood? Michael B. Jordan? He'd have to. He'd have to get to get some push-ups. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan did Adonis Creed. That's true. So you, you can't, can't cross that. over. Okay. How about... Um, I'd say Idris Elba, but he's too old. Uh, what about, uh, oh, that guy died from Fast and the Furious. Paul Walker, <laughs> crap. <laughs> All right, yeah, I mean, also white. Yeah, well, I mean, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to put boundaries. Don't, yeah, don't, be, don't be racial about it. I didn't want to uh, cross over there. Hey, we've we've done pretty well today. This has been fun. Yeah, I gotta say, it kind of wrapped up a little quicker than I thought it would. But, um, but it got hot and then it got cold. The Rolodex and the guest list was pretty decent here. I enjoyed this. Well, 
All right, so what should we tell about RSD? We're not going to do it live, but we are going to do it. We're going to do it today. Why? If we, so I want to say, I'll take back what I, most of what I said earlier. Thank you to the Luke Thomas YouTube channel for facilitating today. Thank you. And this week. That's all you have to be. Week, all you got to do is just and, be nice. That's all you got to do. thank you to Othello, who's a really nice guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's okay. He checks his phone a little bit too much for my taste, but he's all right. You know he's, he's, he's all up on the Reddits, too, that guy, you know? Are, you like, are you like a Reddit guy? He has cats that don't live at home. Like I won't put you on right? camera if you want. Why don't you sit in the seat here for a second? You want, Can we get Othello? Do you want to be on, on camera, camera or not? Please. Okay. Let's let's do this. Let's, let's say hi to Othello. Thing. Why don't you Othello, why don't you tell the audience how we met? Yeah, yeah. So we met um what, 2010, 2011? No, before that. Really? So MMA Nation. So w I had a radio show on 1067 the fan locally in the city. And um, you and Chad Dukes. Chad Dukes was a different show. Like he, he had a, he had like a weekday show. I had a weekend show, but, but but he was covering all sports. I was covering just just MMA, and uh, I needed a producer. And I think Chad Dukes recommended you to me. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. My my, my job was uh, I was working the dump button for afternoon drive. And what is that? The swear button or is that the yeah. cough? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah there's like a there's a lead between the broadcast yes. and which and what you know the what they record. So you can hit the dump button in case someone's okay. like tell me word, you know? tell me what would get the dump button treatment. Because we might need one on our show if we want to long term have sponsors. Unless we go with Delta Eight sponsors all the way. I just think we should have weed and dildo sponsors <laughs> call it a day. What would get what would make you hit the button? I mean obviously all the four letter words um, you can say like piss but you can't say piss on or piss in. Uh, oh wow did you say you are piss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you are piss. <laughs> um, I don't. So I would sit in a, basically a closet and just listen to the show and just wait to push the the button. And uh, yeah, Dukes was like, "Hey, you like MMA? You should you should be Luke's producer. He doesn't have anybody." And so I and here we are. And here we are, all these years he's later. Well known in the Luke Thursday chat space. Right? Yes, oh, uh, he's he is he's been helping me with that for quite some time actually. So yeah. yeah. Would you find that in the live chat on Luke's? live chat that it has the same level of misogyny and racism that the morning combat youtube live chat I've, has in it i've heard that the mk uh we have uh, some gross fans apparently it's jan six like every day up in that bitch yeah, yeah. it's jan six because there's no mods right like nobody is in i don't there. think so there's it's, no mods in the ufc it's, either it's right? it's <laughs> it's cpac and jan six every yeah, yeah. fucking time so yeah. I, I hear i hear it's pretty rough do you want to make any controversial political statements? Or no, say don't you fucking do it on my channel. <laughs> what? what? No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, how, how are you finding Vegas so far, Othello? It's not your first trip, but how are you finding it so I've, far? I mean, I, it's cool, I guess, but it's just so expensive. I it is expensive. I spent $80 on breakfast this morning, I told you. God, um, it's like two coffees, and that's why I won't I won't get on the same bill as Luke because yeah. he'll buy things that I'm like, what? That's you a know? fair charge. So you make a lot of unfair charges. That's a fair one. I, I will I will buy things and then just not eat them. That is very true, actually. Although I, I remember like Vegas having more attractive people last time I came here. Okay, so hold on, but we are there's a convention here, mm. and it's just a bunch of like, you know. 30 40 nothing corporate professionals yeah, yeah. so that's going to skew it also spring break I don't, I don't think spring breaks really started it's still uh, chilly out a little bit it's yeah. still chilly like it's yeah. going to hit in april i feel like that's which true. will bring all the college kids here yeah you know um once they start doing the pool parties that's when that's right where's right. all the irl fans hanging out right? dude i did a pool party one time f1 i did a pool party uh at uh what, what do they call the one here wet republic it's right, actually right up, right up these doors, and it was so hot that it uh, fried. We had, and this was with Sirius XM, so we had like the, the official gear, mm. and it fried all the shit. Like really? we had, yeah, we we couldn't but do it anymore. ISDN. My phone, my phone died. My laptop died. I'm like, hey guys, here's an idea. Let's do a broadcast that's not on the surface of the sun. How about that? Why don't we do that one instead? Uh, Othello, what can you tell the listeners about? You know, you've known Luke Thomas for 14 years. Yeah. Long time. I mean, you've Long seen time. him, I'm sure, at his absolute worst. Before he was Professor Salt and, Salt and Pepper, I, I knew him when he had a head full of uh, brown hair. I would, say, I would say that Luke is not Luke isn't the villain that everyone has paints him ooh, out to be. Ooh. He, yeah, I've been trying to fucking tell you, dude. I've been trying to fucking okay, tell you. Let's go deeper on this, Othello. I've worked with a lot of like maniacs in media. And Luke is, I'm not even just saying he this. He held it together today. He did. He held yeah. it together. You got to give him that, right? Well, there are some moments. He was threatening <laughs> to lose his shit. If you, you're like, actually lost it on um, Like Vince McMahon, he lost his shit all over. Let him right? say nice you know? things. Okay, I, I, was, I know that everyone like hears Luke uh, like shit on people and, and kind of act angry and like a drill sergeant. But really, Luke is like top three nicest dude I've worked with in media. My wow. Opinion. 
Yeah. I will say he's unaware of his transgressions. Well, like well, us, uh, you know, uh, oh, he's a very I mean, nice man. The he's pot nice calling man. the kettle black. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa! I'm unaware. Oh. Yeah, but outside of that, he does, he is a nice man. He's a nice soul. Yeah. This guy, Luke yeah, Thomas, he and he, you know, he he owns a lot of really nice shit, and he put it together for us today. And you know, yeah, well, hold on. Uh, let me think. Uh, Othello helped help me. BC even did a little bit of manual labor. Not much. Not I, I much, was willing did, and able. I was just largely ignorant. Largely ignorant. That's uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> willing and able, just largely ignorant. The Brian Campbell story. Uh, Othello, also, li- where, where, where do you live in Northern Virginia? Uh, Reston. Reston. Yeah. Try to explain to BC, it's not that far from where I live, from a distance-wise. Yeah. How long does it take you to get to my house from where you are? An hour, every every single time. Yeah. Where do you live? Yeah. Fairfax Station? No, Not no. far from that. That's like, yeah, that's like 15 minutes further into the sticks. You uh, ever see Dan Raphael at the local, uh, no? No. Uh, uh, he doesn't look like he gets out much. Okay, okay. Now we're going that we're, we're going to that level of humor now. I'm, I'm saying he has no tan. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> and um, his wife and my wife get oh, along real oh, well. Wow. That's right. Yeah, they're oh, both Hispanic women. That's right. Wait, can I ask what nationality your wife is? She's a half uh, uh, Iranian, the other ha- a quarter Bolivian and German. So, do they connect on the South American vibes? Well, obviously. Culturally, they do for sure. Yeah. But his wife is, you know, way more. <laughs> My wife's the real deal. Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. His wife, who I've met in, is wonderful, and she did make an appearance on our documentary, by the way. That she one did. Time. That's right. Yep. Um, tell us something awesome about Mrs. Thomas, if you can, please. Besides I mean, the fact that she used to roll with Roxy Modafferi. Yeah, she that's pretty it. awesome. Yeah. I mean, she's really nice to me. Every time I see her, she always makes an effort to come downstairs and talk to me whenever, oh, that's, whenever that's I'm at Luke's house yeah. and. She always and makes me feel like I'm not a weirdo. And, that's and then when he leaves, she's like, <laughs> did he bring bed bugs this time? <laughs> um, uh, hey. w- wait, wait, hold on. I'm not done. I'm not all done. Right, what right. are your, like, you know, when, when you nerd out, what, what areas? What's your nerd? You know, because I'm a big Dune guy. I'm a big Dune nerd, okay? Oh, really? where, what's your, where do you nerd out? If you, if you think the answer is not pornography, okay. <laughs> then you just don't know this man. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wow, he didn't even, he didn't have to I told you, I told you, you thought I was doing a bit. I wasn't doing a bit. He's like, uh, yeah, Brazzers. <laughs> <laughs> I did bring my PS5 here. Oh, wow. Oh, yes, you know what? I've never played a PS5. What, you, what games are you rocking on um, that? Spider-Man, MLB The Show, um, God UFC of War 5? is pretty awesome. It's too, that, that game's too hard for me. Which one? Uh, God of War. God of War's hard? No, no, no. Uh, UFC, UFC 5, you say. Yeah. It's too hard? I mean, Can't you just put it on like easy level or something? I guess, but like jujitsu is hard enough. Making like a little character the ground, on TV. The ground play is hard in those games. Yeah. Yeah. It is. They should oh, just why aren't you playing Fortnite game? like all the other cool dads like me? Are you playing Fortnite? Oh, I live Fortnite. Really? Yeah. My wife sometimes thinks it's a mistress in my life. You know? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm not that committed to the bit. I don't think so. I, I'm. I'm just getting into it. But, um, You're like really into da- being a dad for the dad parts, not for like the yeah. you know, other parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a, a new dad as like Luke, oh. so we'll so he, our girls, his oldest and my girl are roughly close in age. But how old is your youngest? She's gonna be two next month. She's uh, not that one that Tuki was complaining about not sharing toys that time. No. Uh, uh, that, also, that, that, that Tuki does a lot of not sharing. So <laughs> you know, I mean, sometimes, dude, like I don't want to be like a bad dad, but sometimes she'll come to me and she'll be like. You know, hey, so and so was mean to me at the playground, and I'm always like, my first instinct is always like, oh no, let me help. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing, like, I'll hear like my wife be like, uh, Tuki be like, hey, can I have some milk? And this will be like, no, like, you have to have your food first, and then after that you can have the milk. Because kids will play this game where they get the milk to be the substitute. Oh, yeah. And so my wife's like, eat first, and I'll give you the milk. And then she'll come over to me and she'll be like, Dad, Mom said I can't have milk ever. <laughs> and I'll be like, that's not what she said. No, but does she say that in Spanish, though? So, 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 if I say no first in English to something, then she goes to mom ah. and turns it and goes, Mama, Española. quiero leche, por fin. Um, Othello, what languages are spoken in your house? I mean, uh, our nanny doesn't speak English. She only speaks Spanish. Do uh, either of you understand that? Yeah, yeah. Othello speaks a little Spanish. Yeah, I went to Ecuador, like, for three summers when I was a kid. Uh, you believe in the BBL movement? Oh, big time, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's ma- very matter of fact. <laughs> he, was, he pulled that trigger immediately. <laughs> He's like, yes! <laughs> Holy Jesus, yes! Uh, 
probably our best interview of the day, actually. Yeah, this was, you, know? this, yeah, you should be fighting Tim Zoom. Um, right? what, yeah. Did you speak any other languages growing up? Uh, Arabic and, uh, yes, yeah, Spanish. You could have translated for if we needed today, right? Uh, I, how good's your Arabic? Not very good. Yeah. No. How's your Spanish? We had Martin Bader, Mar- Mas- the master. Yeah. master the Argentinian. Ma- yeah. 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 Master Bader. All right, we can call this one off. We All right. Hey. <laughs> I, I, was, I was liking the Othello what, uh, treatment. Are you going to give people an answer for... Uh, okay. Oh, yes. So, yeah. G- <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, I came here for RSD. <laughs> All right, so RSD. Uh, we're going to cut it after this show. So what's going to happen is we're going to wrap up some of this stuff. We're going to take this camera and these microphones upstairs. I don't need any light. We're just going to do it real basic. Uh, and we're going to ingest a bunch of marijuana. And, um, <laughs> whoa, 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 I don't know. I mean, you know, I, mean, you know, I don't know. Okay, I mean, Brian. Speak for yourself. Okay. You know what I mean? I mean, maybe I'll have a Diet Coke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I bet. I bet. Yeah. And it's not yeah, going to be yeah. live? Or? It will not be live. But in, it will. In, but in spoiler alert, we're going to get loose in turn four like Dale Sr. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, just joking about deaths. The fuck? Quiet after that. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. With that in mind, Othello, thank you for your help today. Thanks for having me out here, man. Took, yeah. it took you a while to get your head on straight, yeah. but then once you did, it was great. Yeah, it was great. have a big day tomorrow, Othello. Yeah. You know? Tomorrow's going to be a big day, too. There's, tomorrow should be a little bit easier, I think. Yeah. A, because it's going to be easier to set up, and then B, you know. If whatever. shit goes south and Luke yells at you tomorrow, will you vape to, to deal? Will I, you vape? I, you guys don't want to have me high around you. I'm already kind of stupid. I don't want to be around you t- at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, with that, thank you. Thank yeah, you, Othello. Thanks for having there me. There he is. Let's kill his yeah, mic. He's, he's a good man, that guy. Uh, very helpful. Also, I had, there was a couple times where I had the mics off when I wasn't supposed to, and he yes. helped me out and get him back on. That, do you think that makes up for his disgusting searches? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, just, just generally disgusting. Ah, yeah. so this is what they mean by appalling pornography. Yeah, okay, ah, okay, okay, okay. All I right. Mean, well, with that yeah. in mind, why don't we call it a day? So this was day one. We'll have another broadcast for tomorrow, probably around the same time. Um, we we interviewed some good people. Man, Roly was great. Roly was okay. Tim Zoo was great. He was, he was good. Yeah, he was good. Rolly, he was good. Um, um, yeah, that's it. Everyone else was great. They were pretty good. They were pretty good. Yeah, Kenobi was decent. You know, could, you know, give or take, he's you know, <laughs> he's fine. All right. Why don't you just you know? All right. So that's Brian Campbell. I'm Luke Thomas. Thank you guys so much for watching. Back tomorrow. With everything, plus we got to pull a bunch of these interviews out. It, it was what it was, but uh, hey, love special you. thanks to the Luke Thomas YouTube channel for, right. for hosting us today. Thank special you. thanks to the donks who are being patient while we get everything transferred over. Yes. And then, uh, last but not least, um, RSC recording tonight. Probably will go up tomorrow, maybe Saturday or Sunday, but definitely going to get recorded tonight. Okay. Um, what is your favorite discontinued food? Wait, hold that until RSD. I will right? hold it until RSD. All right, for BC, I'm LT. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time. Stay frosty. Bye. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get out of here. Mm-mm-mm-mm.